Boom! There so. it is, man. Hello, hello. Dude, I didn't even realize that we've been talking for almost an hour, maybe an hour. We're already <laughs> we're just. <Yeah. laughs> we uh, we can talk. We uh, we like to hang out. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, for God. sure. Hello, everybody. Oh. How are we doing? Hello, hello. We're Good evening close- to you. We're getting closer to that live shooting live. Oh yeah. We haven't had a designated time yet, but we'll get there. One of these days. One of these days. I think I'm going to keep it traditional today, and I think I'm going to hit it, hit it again so we can have the traditional two beat that I was doing, the two <laughs> songs in the beginning. So, um, hello, everybody. Welcome to Side by Side Movie Podcast. I'm your host, CJ Robles. And I'm Ben Garrett. And welcome, welcome. This is the uh, podcast where we talk about movies, two movies that have... Um, Two things in common, same actors, same directors, same producers, anything. Uh, mostly comedies is what we kind of hang out here. <laughs> and well, and, and this week, uh, a lot of the actors and directors are the same in both movies. Is Yeah, I mean. So on our show, when we have an actor or an actress or writer appear. And, uh, a notable cast member. Yes, there you go. A notable cast member that... that those frequent appearances, we call this um, a, a uh, frequent offender. Repeat offender. A repeat offender, yeah. They frequently show up <laughs> as a repeat offender. Um, so we have uh, here uh, a lot today, don't we? Yeah, we got a few. We yeah, certainly we, do. Do we want to go straight into offending or should we wait? Yeah, like I mean, we, we could even be, you know, for this episode, these are the offenders. The offenders. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Instead uh, of if the, you uh, will. The Defenders yeah. or the Avengers. We Avengers. have the... The of- Offenders. <laughs> the Offenders. Uh, funny enough, they were actually... Uh, after Disney bought uh, Marvel and all that, and they were going to do a Hulu show, uh, or a couple of them. They actually did put out MODOK, uh, but they were going to do three other shows of that. Howard the Duck, um, and two other ones that I can't just think of off the top of my head. Uh, but they were going to be the Offenders. They were going to come in... Uh, and do oh, like they, really a, did make it. They, they, really they were they were in the works of making that, but Modoc was the only one to survive, uh, at least for now. So, so the offenders are a Disney product, essentially. Of, yeah, it's I a mean, product of every, Marvel, yeah, yeah, Mar- it's a product of Marvel. Oh, yeah. no, oh, well, I mean, Modoc, I mean, I watched a couple episodes of it. It's Marvel's Modoc, it is, but it's Patton Oswald. I mean, it's not like crazy. You know, yeah. like offensive or anything like that. It's not cur- well, to, cursing to, up to, a storm. To some, maybe some mouse in the house, it might be a very uh, hard yeah. for well, him to, to swallow. Very true. Yeah. This very, very old true. mouse. This very, very yeah. old mouse. That just... <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And we've, we've, we've gone over him, uh, <laughs> gone over that mouse in South Park and, you know, Simpsons <laughs> and all that stuff that too. Damn mouse. That was, uh, yeah. That, yeah. Right. Instead of that darn cat. Oh, God. Um, yeah. But man, I mean these these two movies that we have, um, I I think this was like the first time in the MCU that you know nobody really knew what was going on. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, at least this was for me. Like it was like a whoa, this is different. You know, we're in space. Left. Yeah, it came out, out of left field. field. Yeah, not something that you would uh, kind of connect to it. I mean looking back in the grand scheme of things i mean it would be you know if you have thanos you do kind of need to bring in other players uh and they they do a great job of setting that up in the first movie i mean everybody's like oh ronan oh we hate ronan by the end of it they're like oh we hate thanos thanos is the real person you know and so there i mean you hear his name a lot throughout this movie um and that's like i said it's just to build up that infinity uh, saga that they had uh, going and finally ended with Endgame, but uh, yeah, man, this uh, yeah. go for it. It, it feels like because so I it's weird how they did it. The equation for Phase One, uh, like we're discussing before we we started shooting, is Marvel and MCU Phase One was perfect. It's like a hit. I don't you know there's a lot of controversy going on with all this stuff that's coming on with Marvel now and and uh, but I'll say like the way they planned it out. So Guardians is the only way you can get into the Infinity War. Yeah. 
So they somehow, like the when you're telling the, they're telling the story, a window pops up and then here they come. And all of a sudden, it's the Guardians come out of nowhere. And they kind of like steal the show. And it's at the very, like, I want to say the mid-level point. It's because Age of Ultron already passed. And then yeah. you're looking at like, you're looking no. at. Well, not not before the first one. Age first of Ultron one came... was 20, what? So 2014 is Guardians. 2015 yeah. so they're oh, okay man i'm getting i gotta no okay, no so you're good you're good they're they're right there then so so yeah. they're all like kind of coming out that part and there's like this little like asterisk guardians of the galaxy and a lot of people that when i was talking to him about it they're they're like um well first it was uh james gunn mm-hmm. which i i am we'll talk about him because this is the whole yeah. price show probably be about him um and then um uh they saw they talked i was like what's well, a james gunn movie but then you know we had up and coming up chris pratt you know, Zoe Zaldana has already been in a lot of things. Uh, yeah, he, Bautista, uh, Parks and Rec was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that, and then Dave, yeah. and then Dave Bautista. You know, you, you get that WWE, you know, um, image, and then <laughs> so, and then you have uh, who else am I missing? I mean, Bradley Cooper, Vin, Vin Diesel, and by the way, I think on Side by Side we shall now refer to Vin Diesel as Twin Diesel. Twin Diesel. Two of them. It was right in our face. I didn't even notice it. And, oh uh, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, I heard that. And because we got him from Boiler Room, so we're already our first offender that we're going to acknowledge. And Twin Diesel, Brad, Brad, Bradley Cooper from The Hangover. The Hangover. So already Rocket and Groot are already offended, and they're the already. they're the guys that would probably offend the most out of all yeah. of this. But Groot, um, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know he's offending you. That's the great thing about but it. You know he is. He's telling you something, and unless you can speak Groot, you're, you're you got to go with like you know he's a smart ass. But before we get started, and I squeeze move over the. The, um, the 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 screens. I was. These are comic books that I handpicked myself. We got here the Gardens of the Galaxy, the Homecoming um, episode, hey. uh, issue. So my mother uh, had a time capsule for me. My my brother kind of started it, and I thank him for that. Thank you, Oswald. And my mother uh, stored it for me, and it was from like two thousand five, or sorry, from like my childhood, like very like late eighties, all nineties, and then like about two thousand five is where it ends. I just got it a couple months ago, so I've had I've had uh, I'm just going through it little by little, just seeing what I have. And man, I I I love that this is my comic book. And then I flip it over, and uh, I have another issue. This is a part four uh, of a saga, but it's um, it's a uh, there's there's like a there's like a whole series of dedicated to the Guardians, like a lot. And I mean, I totally forgot this is like one of the main characters in Infinity War that we don't ever really get to. Adam Warlock. Yeah. We talk about yeah. him, we talk about the uh, you know remember. Uh, we have a uh, uh, we have uh, spoilers. We talk about uh, Warlock at the end. We get the, the little notion of him at the end of the second one. But uh, yeah. before we move on, I, I got to show one last thing because I totally I don't forget I have this. I just it's just we're talking about it and I didn't I didn't grab it. But uh, I just got this lying around. Hey, hey I am a, yeah I am a you know I, I actually man I think it's in storage, but I do have an Infinity Gauntlet too. Uh, it's like a toy one. Uh, I got as a wedding present, uh, not my not my wedding, but like I was an officiate at the wedding, yeah. so that was like a a gift that was given to me. Yeah. Um, I just want to say up? one last thing, dude. I um, have these. Uh, oh no, I got the wrong ones here. Well, I picked. I have, I have these comic books here. I mean, comic trading cards that I uh, Marvel masterpieces, but I got the wrong ones um, because. I actually, for the longest time, and we'll get to them because it's Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I have a, a trading card for Ego. Yeah? And I was it's, like... And Kurt Russell's on there? No, it's not or... Kurt Russell. And by the <laughs> way, I did, I, I did not know that Wyatt Russell was his son, but for some reason, yeah. I just thought it was his son. And I just I accepted it, and then I started hearing that he was his son. I was like, okay, I was right. I guessed that right. Yeah. But... Um, it's like, wow, that looks a lot like Kurt Russell. <laughs> it's like wow and oh well, his last name is russell interesting well so katie Holmes, <laughs> i mean katie, katie kate hudson is uh goldie hans child right yeah but she was just raised like his stepdad is By, russell. yeah that's yeah stepdad's kurt russell um and then pretty cool why it right <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right yeah so let's, man let's, let's, uh, let's do that and there then yeah so Wyatt russell's her half brother that's what i was getting at Okay, okay. Uh, I need to get, dig, dig a little bit more with Mr. Uh, Kurt Russell. Let's see. Yeah. Got the movie playing. I got Guardians 1 playing. I got Guardians 2 pan, playing. I'm already at uh, the part where they're on Contraxia. Oh, dude, you're good. You're good. Which, 
which I wrote down, AKA means you can contract something like a disease there. <laughs> um, it looks like it's just a planet of uh, let's do of hookers. I don't, I don't ladies, ladies of the robots of the night. I don't know. Dude, that'd be like prostitute robots. Like, uh, well, I mean, that's, Finbots? that's the, what is it? Vin, Finbots? Fin bots. Oh, no, those aren't prostitutes. Those are just female I thought bots. you. I thought you said bim bim bots. Oh, and I was be... like, <laughs> that's a. Are you a part of the offenders, there, my friend? Oh, you better believe it, buddy. <laughs> um, Good, we're taking um, applications. Yeah. Um. So I, I I wasn't writing a whole lot of notes. I was just kind of watching the movies, and I was like, dude, you've seen these movies so many times. You need to write some stuff down because there's some stuff that you're catching on. To, and you need to remember, like uh, some uh, the past couple episodes, like I've just been kind of bouncing off of what you're you're going off of too. Like there's some some things that like if we're watching the movie, I'm like, oh that I remember what I was thinking whenever I was watching this. Um, but one thing that I just it, for some reason I didn't it didn't click until I watched it this time because uh, I guess it's been a week a while since I've seen Guardians. Uh, yeah. But Nebula says something about Gamora being her favorite sibling. Yeah. And then in Infinity War, you have like the children of Thanos. It's like, uh, oh, damn. All those crazy alien looking things. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, oh, damn. Nebula and Gamora used to be children of Thanos too. Like they were part of that group. Ebony Maul, that's who I was thinking of, one of the names. Uh, but, yeah, they were part of that group before they left. And, uh, you know, whenever you're watching Infinity War and Endgame, like, you're just thinking, oh, these are the Guardians of the Galaxy. You don't really associate where they came from. Like, at least whenever I was watching it, I didn't. Maybe I didn't. I needed to rewatch the Guardians of the Galaxy to remember, you know, just how far they had come. Uh, yeah. to Infinity War. But, uh, yeah, that was the first time that clicked. I was like, oh, they're children of Thanos. These, those were her other siblings. That's, that's, that's just crazy to think of. Um, but, well, yeah. It's kind of like, like there's the, man, the messages in these movies are uh, are kind of out there. So let's yeah. do the traditional, let's, uh, let's catch up uh, what we're doing. So we're um, kind of basically essentially reviewing movies. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, 2014, PG-13, two hours, one minute. Action-adventure comedy, released August 1st, 2014. A group of intergalactic criminals must pull together to stop a fanatical warrior with plans to purge the universe director james gunn writers james gunn nicole promise it's like they do the the characters and all that uh, you know stanley rp sir uh chris pratt twin diesel bradley cooper um the as the stars for this one top three and then we have gardens of the galaxy volume 2 2017 pg-13 two hours 16 minutes action adventure comedy may 5th 2017 uh the guardians struggle to keep together as a team while dealing with their personal family issues Notably, Star Lord's encounter with his father, the ambi ambitious celestial uh, being Ego. Director James Gunn, writers James Gunn, uh, stars Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista. Now, uh, that's we're here, and we're just gonna have to talk about uh, these are two James Gunn's movies, and we got here through uh, um, Zack Snyder from Dawn of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Yep, and Dave Bautista as well. Uh, we had him in Army of the Dead last week, and that's uh, that's how we got to these two movies. Uh, this is our first time dipping our toes into the MCU as well. Um, quite possibly one of my favorite franchises. Um, very closely rivaled by Star Wars and Game of Thrones, because that that's still going to be dishing stuff out. Um, wow! So you're, so wow, that's a that's a lot there, buddy. Yeah, that's no, I deep. yeah, I enjoy a lot of the. Um, a lot of the franchises are going on right now. Uh, yeah, it may very well all be propaganda, but by God, I'm eating it up, and I'm all loving the, all the all the it. MCU stuff that they're they're selling us. Or uh, what? Yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, just a little bit. Not even selling us, but like, ah, I don't know, dude. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. 
I love it, but it, I just have to keep a weary eye on it. The MCU for sure. Because when was the last time you went and saw a Marvel movie and you're like, eh, I don't know about this movie. Uh, it's been a minute. I don't know. Like, I can't. I can't. I yeah, can't dude. I mean, and they're owned by Disney. It's a it's a big corporation, and you really kind of see everything kind of forming together in the MCU around Captain America Avengers, like 2011, 2012. That's when things really start shaping and like, okay, this is where we're going with this. We have kind of like an episodic adventure we're about to go on, um, you know, because it, we'll just say where it all started, 2008 Iron Man. Uh, that's where it went. Then you had Incredible Hulk, um, 2010. You also had Iron Man 2 in 2010. Then 2011, you had Thor and uh, Iron Man, co- or uh, excuse me, uh, Captain America come out. And so they were all distributed by different companies at that point. Like you had um, Iron Man, it was distributed by uh, Paramount. Universal had uh, the Incredible Hulk, and I think Paramount had Thor. I know they had Captain America too. Um, but anyway, you're talking about getting the rights, right? Terry? Yeah, yeah, getting well, yeah, because Marvel didn't they like in the I think in the 90s they like sold all their stuff out so they could because they're going stay they're going alive. Bankrupt. They were going bankrupt, yeah. yeah. And so I mean, Sony had Spider Man. Um, Fox had Fantastic Four and the X Men. I mean, it it was it's all over the place, um, and so 2012 you have the Avengers. And it's the first Disney movie that the MCU has, and I'm gonna be quite honest. The original Avengers, oh, it's it's probably one of the best superhero movies ever made, just yeah. hands down. Just, I think just in, in the way of telling a story. It's pretty it, good. And how they were able to do it with the pieces that they got, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, you, you have a backer like Disney. It's going to be a little bit easier to, you know, you're going to have a budget. You're going to have a, a huge budget, you know, especially for a team up me- meeting or a movie like this. It's, I mean, it's, they've had stuff like that that's been done before, but not on this scale, you know? So this is kind of like a, it's a new thing, kind of, but not really. But I mean, you 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 kind of see a formula. That's that's what I'm kind of getting at with this whole. Yeah. Uh, what I'm kind of leading up to is there. There seems to be some formula that Marvel Disney is using to make a movie palatable to everyone. Um, at least you know, for the for for broad strokes purposes, I'm saying everyone. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people that don't like a certain movie in the MCU. That's, I mean, you you have 23 movies; they can't all be your favorite. You know, there's going to be some that are going to rank a little bit lower than the others. It's just going to yeah. happen. But so, they're very formulaic, dude. They're very, they really are. And to be honest, I haven't I haven't figured out what it is, and it may just be like basic plots to, or. Uh, plot and storytelling devices like okay you gotta have a middle a beginning and end you know like it may just be something like that uh to where i think you're right about that you know you know where they they just have um they are able to tell a story very well and it can be completely different from this other story but then you bring everything together it's i don't know what it is I don't know what it is. I can't necessarily put my finger on it, but they have something there. I mean, um, they, start, they they got the best of the best. I mean, and they let them they, and they let them do what they want. I mean, John Favreau as freaking Iron Man made this. He made this, dude. And yep. not to not, not top it off, he plays Happy Hogan and the whole thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it is it is kind of odd that we do have John Favreau on our show a lot. Not the person, but you know, offending. And um, he's not offending with the MCU. Out of all, out of all the ones we picked, we picked the 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 two that he wouldn't it's kind of weird like you know what i mean like we yeah. i thought we'd, it would be easy to run into him but then you get james gunn so you really do get a uh you know i don't know he's a he's a pretty good writer man yeah um i don't i don't want to go um too far as i mean because i know side by side we definitely um we tackle things you know we don't tackle things we just talk about things we're not we're not troubleshooters or anything like that but 
uh, just real quick, I don't want to like not talk about this, but he did get in trouble, didn't he, James Gunn? Yes, yes. I honestly, dude, and this is this is why Disney did what they did, is because he got in trouble. They dropped him, and everybody forgot about it, and they brought him back. Because I couldn't tell you what I think. I think it was probably some. Uh, I think it. I think it was like probably probably like pedophile sounding tweets or something like yeah, that that's... from the beginning. Like you know, and it was probably out of context or something like that. I mean, Twitter was young, and it's like going back on MySpace and being like, "Oh, whoa, look at what you said there, you dirty bastard." You know? I mean that that is I mean going back to Chris D'Elia though like there was he didn't go to court or anything you know just so some tweets came out yeah about him or you know but so it's like you got you know what I'm saying like it's it's always gonna be like I mean a but child pedophile thing is kind of like to my like oof, it does sound like you don't want that around no. your name and but I don't know how you even get to that like how does your name get to be around something like that but I mean it, it happens you know yeah and um, well and and you know like I said that's that's why I think Disney took the best course of action. They distanced themselves. And then once they realized, okay, this isn't going to affect us, they brought him back. Um, kind of whenever we went it, over. It what's, what's that? No, I was, oh, was going to say he didn't, it didn't mean he didn't do it, but I'm just saying, yeah. I think it's, you know what I'm saying? When I say it happens, I mean that it, like that happens. I'm saying like it happens that people get, get accused of things all the time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Like it, it really, really like, it's like, it's 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 so this so was he he was one of the beginning me tours is that was what it is or, or oh uh, how, of how, what of like uh oh no dude this this had to happen after Weinstein right no I thought it was before Weinstein I don't know how long Let's has Weinstein see. got in trouble can we just say That's, his name yeah <laughs> why not this is YouTube yeah. right we're good oh, yeah. you can say whatever you want yeah no one's gonna yeah. check up. No, you you got to be like Trump level to be getting shit off. Oh, you. oh no, oh, dang it! You said it. Shoot! You, all right, we'll start it. Just ruin, over. just ruin the episode for us. <laughs> um, let's see here. What did you? Well, you know, because because the only reason I, I bring that up because we 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 you know when we figured out, oh, I figured. I mean, through the episode, I found out about Victor Selva, and I was like, oh crap! Yeah, and that, and yeah. that was that was me kind of just. I didn't. Like, I didn't. I don't. I, like I. I'm not prepared for a lot of this, like you, like you said. Like sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. And most majority of the time, you can tell my performance that I'm just kind of figuring it out as we go. Um, I haven't looked up anything on James Gunn, but it seems like what I what I know is that something happened um, where he somebody they just he inappropriate tweets or inappropriate stuff that he was posting out there. Which I mean, at the same time, like <laughs> getting your getting your name in that, like why would I don't know. Anyways, uh, okay. So, so here's what it was in July. Yeah, this was this happened in July 2018. So I, I'm pretty sure this is after Harvey Weinstein. Oh yeah, this is after Harvey Weinstein. Um, in reaction to Gunn's public criticisms of Donald Trump, commentator Mike Cernovich drew attention to tweets that Gunn wrote between 2008 and 20, 2012, joking about topics like rape, 9/11, child abuse, and pedophilia. Um. Yeah, amid criticism, Disney severed ties with uh, Gun. Let's see here. It's like he was, but he's like in his mid forties when he did that. Yeah, he's, he's fifty now, and he did. Yeah, so it's I don't know. I, what I'm trying to say um, is that that the that, I've like, regretted those jokes for many years since. Regardless how much time I understand people, uh, I understand except business the business decisions taken today. Even these many years later, I take full responsibility of the way I conduct myself. All I can do now is offer my sincere, heartfelt regret um, to everyone inside my industry and beyond. That's what he said. Um, let's see here. So, so, so was he like doing jokes, <clears throat> right, right, or some? I mean, I guess so. Or I, I, I do remember reading some of the stuff, and it was it was pretty dark. But I, I mean, it... okay. So what I'm saying is, I knew he did one. And then he finished two, and then he was gonna do three. Then he got canceled. Then he came back. Is that what the yeah. sequence is? Yeah, okay. this is, yeah, that's exactly. So what he, happened. so he's still doing part three. It's gonna be yeah. his movie. So he's yep. it's basically so he's gonna have full control over one, two, and three. Now I don't want to bring this name up either because I don't know. I I love one of my favorite. Okay, put it this way: What is your favorite pre? I'll even go Iron Man superhero movies. Before well, up until that point, what was your favorite superhero movie? Oh man. 
Ooh. If you can, Prob- it probably, be... probably, probably, probably Spider Man. Which one? The uh, probably the second one. Probably number right. two. Because oh, yeah. I mean, I oh, let's see. Because two thousand eight, yeah. I mean, before that, we, we didn't even have Amazing Spider Man. That didn't even come out till two thousand eleven. I think the third Spider Man came out in what two? I think it was two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I think it's two thousand eight. Um, I'll check. It yeah, but um, no, the one with Doc Ock is um is amazing. It's a, first off, you already have the story set up, so you're just kind of jumping into this. Um, and yeah, no, it's a. Uh, it's a solid movie. Plus, you get Alfred Molina as Doctor Octopus. Which, uh, fun fact, we're going to be seeing him again in Spider Man No Way From Home or No Way Home, uh, the new Spider Man coming up. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be cool. Yeah, I've, I've tried to stay away from all, all that and just watch the movie, but it's hard. Oh, I'm it's, sorry. I, no, I already knew that. No, I was going to. No, no, I already knew that because it's like every Facebook post is just like, "Hey, look at this, look at this," and then, and it's just a headline. I'm like, "All right, we well, already know he's going to be in it." So it's like you know, it's like super simple. Um, it's it's to understand to get okay. Lost. So James Gunn back in two thousand eight to two thousand ten had a web series called James Gunn's PG Porn. The tagline for people who love everything about porn except the sex. So I could see him making some. If you have something like this, you know, just trying to be like that shock. Shock person, maybe you got too, got too, got too close, got yeah, too shocked. Got, and exactly, got he's kind of like there, Icarus. Got close, yeah, got too close to the sun. So, okay, that that puts a little bit more context on that, too. Like, that's that's another thing as well. Like, I'm by no means you probably shouldn't be making those statements on Twitter. I mean, for good well, lord, people take all that serious nowadays. Like, well, they do, man, and like especially like retro retroactive like canceling i think is uh sometimes not the best way to go about things now um you know retroactive canceling of harvey weinstein you can go for it now i'm not going to cancel all the movies um i'm just going to be quite honest with you man like i just because his name is attached to a piece of work I'm, i i don't think i'm going to be like nope not watching this um I'm not going to fault everybody else around him for his actions. Um, But, you know, there, there had to be a few people, you know, turning a blind eye because this dude, I mean, I feel like he was pretty, he probably flaunted it around just a little bit, but just a little bit. Amazing Amazing Spider-Man came out. You were close 2012. That's not bad. I couldn't remember. And then 2014 is the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now I don't want to get too hung up on that topic. I just. No, no, no. Sorry. I just uh, just wanted to kind of finish, finish that thought there. But um, Um, my, my favorite one uh, was X2. Yeah. I love, I love, I love X-Men 2. With with Striker and all that. Oh, I mean, well, I guess that was, yeah. I mean, (laughs) Wolverine X Men Origins gets such a bad rap, and I, I do have to say the CGI in it is is ass sometimes, but I enjoyed it still. It was two thousand nine though, so it was right after Iron Man came out. It doesn't count. Damn, I I had a hard time with that one. That was a hard pill to swallow. Um, but but I, over the years, I, I I'm sorry, it's grown on me. Sorry, keep going. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not comic book heavy, so I was just going off of this is Wolverine, this is badass. Like I know, I knew who Wolverine was, you know. Uh, so, like I said, I stay a lot um, in the kind of movie side of the lore. Um, I will dip my toes into Wikipedia and look up, like, oh, who's this character, or who who is this person supposed to be? I do that with a lot of the MCU characters too, especially when they had the Netflix shows. I would like. Be like, okay, who is this person? Who are they potentially going to be? Yeah. How do I think this is going to turn out? And I'd kind of use that to kind of guide my my thoughts about the show. Um, you know, one thing about both these movies, <clears throat> probably the greatest thing about them is the soundtrack. Soundtracks on these movies are fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um if they didn't have the like the music choice, uh, I mean, it really you you have the the Walkman that is you know kind of propels this whole 
<clears throat> like seventies and kind of. I mean, after we watched Detroit Rock City, I was I was listening to some of these songs and I was like, these are disco songs. Like that's the first thing that popped in my head. I was like, okay, this is what they're talking about. Like he had like the. Ooh, baby, oh, yeah, because the, the time frame when he got picked up, yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, that was like 10 years after Detroit Rock City's like set up. So, And then also he said that his mom had him listen to songs whenever she, yeah. you know, that she listened to whenever she was a kid. So, um, you know, she was she was loving all these uh, songs music, and everything. Yeah, she, yeah. She liked that, that love music. <clears throat> yeah, uh, like Fooled Around and Fell in Love, man. I, that... <coughs> That song is Sorry. perfect in this movie. Uh, that scene is perfect. Uh, you know, talking about Kevin Bacon and Footloose. <laughs> and, a lot, dude. Oh, dude! Like, and it's it's so funny. Just like, just the little things that uh, Star Lord Peter Quill says, um, and then also, man, like you get you get these characters and you see them progress throughout the movie, and you see them just kind of grow and develop and you you see it you see these people learn to trust each other just a little bit just a little bit at a time yeah okay we're gonna trust you just a little bit more um and they're only with each other out of circumstance you know yeah well yeah I, ca I, I caught on to that with uh <coughs> with uh with um Groot and uh yeah so the, going around this time when I was watching it I, I did pick up a lot of little things I kind of picked up the first time around um but I didn't really like pick it up I it didn't stick in my head till this time. I was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot about this. I forgot about that." I mean, I've seen this movie a lot. Um, when I left Guardians of the Galaxy, I was like, "Holy crap, that is good!" Like, I was like, "Yeah," it was like the perfect meal um, to like that. I was like able to like because I think I was the the year before I went back to college. One of the years. I mean, I was in college for a long time. So, um, I, yeah, because I remember when we when we when I started in twenty fifteen, this one came out twenty fourteen. I remember a lot of references for me. So I remember kind of just picking at it. Um, it's, I mean, even just look at the poster, man, you got, you have Star-Lord, which in the beginning of the movie, which it makes way more sense to me now where he's, he's trying to make himself something. Star-Lord, who? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like who? And then his mother's death was very, very um, more impactful on me than it was the first, the first time it hit me, but this time it hit me again harder. I was like, man, they really do a good job on that. Um, did you see who the grandfather is? He was, um, I forgot his name. I'm looking up real quick, but he he was in Slither. He was the main villain in Slither. Was and, he? Yeah, and he was, that was the, that is the uh, James Gunn um, horror movie that, um, you know, it's pretty, yeah. pretty damn good horror movie. Um, I was looking at, just kind of going through the movies that he's done. I, his first screenplay is uh, Tromeo and Juliet. Have you ever seen that movie? No. I, it's, it's pretty rough, man. It's Romeo and Juliet, but and I'm, I hope I don't get this wrong because there's a lot of remakes of this movie, but I think this is the one where they find out that Romeo and Juliet are like brother and sister and that's why the Montagues and the Capulets hate each other. Oh. Oh, no, he's not the main villain. Sorry, Michael Roker is the main villain, Sl Sl Slither. The main, and he's a repeat offender. The main uh, villain in, I mean, the one of the bad guys in Slither is like the... He, he's he's the grandpa is is this who it is Greg Greg Henry Jack Mc, uh, McReady, is this who it? Yes, that's him. He was in a Slither. He's the grandpa. Yeah, he only has that little scene, but that, that's kind of cool. Kind of like a good old uh, Kevin Smith thing, bringing back someone you worked with. Yeah. So he put him in there. Um, so he's from it Slither's from two thousand six. Man, the movie's aged very well. It's a crazy movie. It's kind of like a zombie movie. You know, you, you know what Slither and uh, Dawn of the Dead are very <laughs> similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. I remember. I remember seeing um, Slither, but I just couldn't tell you. Like it's, I, I saw it once, and I was just like, okay, it's gory, man. It's pretty good. Like, yeah, it's good, dude. Like, I like Slither. I remember I used to watch it, but it's too damn gory sometimes, man. Even all the deaths, there's like, there's a dude gets split in half real easy, and he just he gets hit so hard that he doesn't even realize he's split in half so he even like touches his forehead like i'm bleeding and then he falls apart and you get to see all that <laughs> it's like oh crap so uh, it's it's saying that james gunn wrote the screenplay for 13 ghosts that is another good one uncredit and that's that's actually on uh youtube for free right now saw that oh, earlier yeah yeah that's a good one uh yeah, that, was, that was another that well. date movie i, I used to, like that dvd so <laughs> like to watch movies with it's good man uh shannon elizabeth um you got tony shalom matthew lillard 
It's got a good little cast there. And then the, the, the Arthur, the villain, I forgot his name. He's a good actor. Um, you know, even James Gunn's top four build is the Gardens of the Galaxy, Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2, which, by the way, I love that Volume 2. And then yeah. Movie 43 and Super. That's kind of... I was thinking about Super. It has Rain Wilson. You know, I was watching... I watched Almost Famous the other day, and I forget he's in that. He's got a small little role. He's like a... a uh, uh, like a record producer or something, but he's really, really, it's like a, yeah, it's a small, I, I was looking, he's got like curly hair with a little mustache. He looks all, he looks all, <laughs> you know, he looks like him, uh, but not really. You could kind of, if you told me that was like his cousin, I'd be like, oh, okay. Uh, but you know, Dwight, Dwight Schrute, you know, his beginnings, he, that guy, he's able to yep. do it. Um, well, <laughs> you know, one thing I, I, I love that I picked up real easy this time because like, you find out how dumb Drax is or how literal he is, not dumb, but how literal he is. Was when you first see him in the, in the in the way they reveal him, like he's like a smart, like he's the way he sounds. He sounds kind of like poetic. He uh, but he takes everything too damn literal. That throughout and throughout all the movies, the Infinity War, you know, you know uh, who is Gamora? I'll give you a better one. Why Gamora? <laughs> like, yeah. Why is Gamora? Yeah. <laughs> Why is Gamora? Um, so, I was thinking about that actually. Um, you kind of see him become goofy and all that whenever he gets drunk do you think he's just drunk throughout guardians of the galaxy 2 no dude he's, are he, you he, sure no he's when does he have he never show him have a drink we're not gonna yeah, they do. assume when, he, when, he, when he has a drink with uh, mantis well no i guess okay you're saying when does he drink aside from in the first guardians um no i mean but they could just like hide it Oh yeah, and also too, Drax is also very intelligent. I'm just we're all just slower than him. No, we're not gonna go with that, dude. Come on. You can't, I'm you just can't. saying, man, fan theory. <laughs> fan Drax is Drax Drax is dr I mean, tell me tell me he doesn't have a complete like not not complete, but he's he's definitely different from the first one to the second one. Now obviously the other everybody else is too, but <clears throat> not so much because like in the first one very serious you know doesn't isn't laughing a whole lot uh all this other stuff now he's laughing whenever he's drinking he's having a good time when he's drinking let me let me tell you something um you're the one that said it first my friend uh there's these characters have a lot of story development from <clears throat> the first one he doesn't have a family he doesn't have his daughter he doesn't have his wife no. Yeah, after they go through the mission of the first one of stopping Ronin, they go into Guardians 2. Now the time has passed. This is his new family, so now he is happy. Are you following me with that one? Is, it, is that boring you there? Is that a is no? That <laughs> is that what you want to hear there, sir? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Fair fair rebuttal. Uh, Can, I'm just saying, I, I'm jumping into like, I'm using the facts in the movie that I'm seeing because, or told. I'm using facts that I'm making up, okay? so okay okay he's a drunk it. okay right. so 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 then how long does Ra rocket live then is his lifespan short or is it long no he's cybernetically engineered he can he's gonna live as long as he can go i don't know he's like bart robot is he more is he more raccoon or robot no he's more robot this is more a robot than I mean, have you seen have you seen a raccoon build a spaceship i don't know he has he has to be more robot well, if he was a squirrel, then I, I'd probably, I'd probably yeah. do that. No, I mean, we've we've already learned from Rick and Morty that they yeah, don't mess with they, the squirrels. Yeah, you don't mess with the squirrels. God damn it, Morty! I gotta um, show you that a video I have this from two mornings ago where I didn't mess with the squirrels, but I was playing with the squirrels and they got it. They took it serious. <laughs> they got they like were going at me. I was like, what? <laughs> It was like it's five thirty in the morning. I was out looking at the garden, and they, well, I thought one of the squirrels were gonna jump in the garden, so I went outside to kind of snoop around. And he was just staring at me. It was just, well, it was him. I know it was a he because he showed me his enormous <laughs> freaking sack. Yeah, he, he must was, be the alpha. The alpha, yeah. And he, and he didn't. And then he came at me like he he was coming towards me, and I was like, "What is the squirrels really don't mess with?" But I'll tell you this: I think Drax is probably. And and this and this theory because I didn't even realize that Gomorrah and Star Lord they're not even together. No, they're not together in the first one. They're not together in the second one. They get together in Infinity Wars, I'm, I believe. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah it's she, it's a it's an unspoken thing. But know? they're but but they're together, right? Right, like an Infinity uh, War, like they're kissing and stuff, or. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, like they're, they're a couple by then because I know that when she they died. they were they were attached yeah but i don't know dude like i feel like gamora was she's she's uh 
so far away from trusting people. Let's see, that'd be so 20, 2019. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be five years after Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah, there's probably a good chance that they are. Yeah. Damn, dude, the way the way you 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 make it sound, and the way it's, I'm like, I mean, I'm not the way you make it sound. The way I hear it from you, I'm like, damn, the days, the, like every year was like two movies, right? Or it was like they were like spitting them out, like because yeah. you have like you're right, it's like 2014, 2015, 2016. I'm like, holy crap, like you can literally do the math real easy because there's just they're right, they're connected. Well, and well, Guardians of the Galaxy was the the second one was released 2017, but it's set in 2014. So, yeah. So it's literally in the same year. Yeah, yeah, because um, yeah, it's in uh, the yeah. same year as the first one because you have you have Baby Groot there, um, and so by the time you get to Infinity War, he's a teenager. Oh, that's um, yes, right. You could connect that dot really easy. You're right. That so you have that. that, and then um, but then also like. Yeah, it's just it's with some of the MCU movies, it's kind of hard to keep the timeline. But whenever you watch the first Guardians, it starts off in 1988. All right, that's the first thing you see. 1988 uh, Earth, right? And then so 26 years later, you know, Star Lord is 34. Boom, there we go. Then Guardians of the Galaxy starts off in. 1980 Missouri Earth, and then Damn, 34 you're right. years it goes later, back and forth. You're yeah. Right. So it's it's kind of, it's not really messy. It's very precise, but but if you aren't paying attention, if if you were not not even not paying attention, but if you just kind of forget where you're at for a second, then you're like, oh okay. Because sometimes you have to bring yourself back to like, okay, this isn't this is right after their um, they say the galaxy, which they don't even give themselves their own name. I think that's really kind of cool. You know, you have yeah. Iron Man, you know, I don't know how Hulk got his name. Maybe he just started yelling Hulk a lot. I don't know. Hulk um, smash. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, Iron Man says, I am Iron Man. Yeah. Captain and then America Thor's kinda, Thor. Kind of yeah. America kind of bought a position. Like he kind of like, you're going to become, Cap he knew who was going to be Captain America. Yeah. Thor, that's his name. Um, Hawkeye and, and Black Widow are agents, so that's probably their eight or code names. Yeah, and that that's a good point. Oh, uh, Ben's brought up a good token in our conversation that the Guardians of the Galaxy didn't dub themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. They they were simply that's that's what they were, and so after they defeat Ronan, man, like okay, these these people can help us out with stuff. You know, that's I I was always kind of wondered like. <clears throat> I guess sometimes I forget to watch the previous movie, like right before I go in, I'm like, okay, I remember enough. You know, I kind of have that arrogance about me. I don't know if, well, especially at this point, in MCU, I don't know if I can go sit in the theater and do a marathon to lead up to the next movie, you know? Oh, wow. You're um, right. But um, they do, they do have suggested um, watching or uh, suggested movies to watch before you go and see a movie oh. um, even even what even before um oh gosh what was it watching falcon and winter soldier they were like go watch age of ultron go watch this go watch all these things to kind of prepare you and then like oh okay you know this will click here this will click there kind of thing yeah but well also the gardens of the galaxy was the the second name they got because what was it? It's John C. Riley's character as he's describing him when they're when they're getting um they're get their they're get checking him into the prison and mm -hmm. the, the what's his name? I don't know his name is uh Peter Serafinowicz. He's the, the guy that uh he's the um the one of the other guards and he goes, Now you look like a couple of a holes. <laughs> like Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Does, yeah. That guy yeah. that guy he's in couples retreat, Stanley with an with a C. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh man, I wish we did a couple. For some reason, we'll, we'll I thought there, we had. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll I watched it. I watched it recently. That's why I keep on thinking he's a repeat offender. But no, Stanley he, with the C. Yeah. You know what, dude? <laughs> he was. He does keep kind of like a, a side by side offender, like already. Like he's already kind of like yeah. Like, character actors we like. I mean, Favreau's in it, so we're good there. And Vince Vaughn. So. Oh yeah, we gotta get the v, the Vince Vaughn in. 
Um, um, go for it, man. Like, yeah, so John C. Riley in this movie is fantastic. Um, also, you have Glenn Close in this movie, yeah, which dude. is you know crazy, man. And John C. Riley, don't sleep on him. He has been <clears throat> like for the longest time. I was like, oh yeah, that's Dale from uh, Step Brothers. No, this dude has been in Hollywood and making movies since like good Academy Award winning movies. Let me. For a let while. Me fill you in a, let me fill you in a little bit, John C. Riley. Uh, he's an up and comer. He did both. He did at a time where independent movies were frowned upon. He did a bunch of independent movies, and then he started getting big acting roles. And then, like ten years passed, and they're like, "This dude's been acting since he was in high school." <laughs> you know, like yeah. you go all the way back, and it's like, "Wow, he's got a uh, catalog that's full Dude, he was in all these Boogie Nights, man." Like mm -hmm. he was, and he was, he was like an actual big player in that yeah like did you did you see magnolia no i haven't yeah see that's, that's tom cruise one, yeah tom cruise and, yeah. And, and he's got a big role i mean you gotta like i don't, I don't know if you gotta understand but i'm saying what well, this is why i understood is that it was really hard to get all these roles you know and this guy was getting these good roles without actually having a name for himself yeah but dude, it just seemed, and, it seemed like he was supposed to do it he was in gangs of new york too like oh, yeah, I, like i said man he's he's been in a <laughs> He should he get an Academy Award for how many movies he's been in an Academy Award. You I know, know. Like, exactly. Just, just accumulated, like whatever. Yeah, you you've been in all these movies. You deserve something. You know, I, mean, I know you're not you're not a supporting character, and that's fine. I mean, but, top four, top four builds are Chicago, Guardians of the Galaxy, Hard Walk, The Dewey Cox Story, and then Boogie Nights. See, and why isn't Step Brothers on there? Because that's that's a travesty, and I don't know if he wants to be known by that. But you know. Um, I love that movie. No, that's an awesome movie, man. You're right. You're, you're the, the one thing I hear so much about Step Brothers is they wish they had a longer monologues. Uh, I mean, a montage sequence when they when they attack each other because it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of short. But uh, you know, I'm okay with that. But uh, yeah, like I, I I was thinking that they're gonna go like like ham on each other, but it's only like two each. Um, but I'm gonna bring it up real quick, man, because you're right, man. Step Brothers is such a freaking hilarious movie. It's uh, it's iconic, dude. I mean, maybe uh, yeah, like I said, it. it it may just be one of those movies like from your generation, like 2008. Okay. Yeah. And you had super bad. That was kind of like the movie for like my coming of age, my American pie store, you know, kind of yeah. esque thing going on there. So <clears throat> you could say, I don't feel like it's lost. I mean, a lot of those old Will Ferrell movies, I mean, anchor man, I think is going to be his anchor. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> followed probably closely by Talladega nights. And then I would say Step Brothers is probably a third. Uh, as yeah, much man, as I don't dude. want it to be, but I think that's probably how it's going to rank. Um, what do you mean about Will Ferrell being in, in that in that well in that time period, like yeah, from yeah, two thousand five yeah, yeah. till two thousand eight? I mean, that's that's what Will Ferrell was. I mean, those are the movies that like. What would you? What would be the first thing you thought of whenever you thought of Will Ferrell? You know, it's SNL. Like, yeah. so I go all the way. That's back honestly to that's what I was thinking too. Was uh. The cheerleading, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, him and Cherry or Terry, like, yep. That's. I mean, it's he, she's she's one of the the the, the that Zoolander cast fans, and he's one of the tall ones. Yeah, so he has roles like uh, well, Mugatu's more of a. Do you remember him in um, Austin Powers? Yeah, yeah, dude, that's, Mustafa. Or dude, something dude like that's that. that's. I didn't even know that was him. So it wasn't that movie with Austin Powers was like 98, 97, 99, something like that. And, uh, uh, the first one. The first one. No, that's like ninety six. Ninety six. So yeah, so yeah. he's in that one. And then um, it goes like it took me all the way to like 2005 to realize that that was him. And I went back and watched it. It's like it, I don't know. It's real. It's funnier. For uh, he's a meth head actor. He acts like his role the whole time. It would be kind of hard meth, to be wrong. Meth head actor. Yes, a meth head. He does meth before he gets on set, and that's why he really brings the performances. No, method actor. Okay. And, and method actor. I mean, I I knew I knew what you're talking about. It's just I heard meth head, and I was like, I just wanted to clarify. I, we don't uh, think it, Will Ferrell's meth head. I don't know. He, we don't uh, think it. It's a fact. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at the? the uh, he also looks like. Oh my god! I'm afraid of his name because I was listening as random hard. Yeah, the, the drummer. Chad. Uh, um, yeah. I, forgot, I mean, I didn't. I gotta look it up. But I was listening. Chad to Chili Bono, Pepper. right? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Uh, what do you go? I was listening to the, the the the. You know, I put the radio on. I was listening to the um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I forgot. Like, what are they? Are they like? Are they rock? Are they funk? I mean, I've been listening to them for a long time since the '80s because I got, you know, I was introduced to them. But I'm like, what, what, what are they? Like, um, 
Alternative, red hot chili peppers, man. They, exactly, right? They're just the red hot chili peppers, man. Let's see, the band members. This is gonna really bother you. Me. You know, you know how uh, how you weigh or uh, how you how you measure Chad Smith. Sorry, yes. How you measure red hot chili pepper, right? What? You give it away, give it away, give it uh, away now. That's a good one. They give it away, give it away. I'm sitting here, ticket prices, $161 on SeatGeek. Are they touring right now? Probably. Dude. You got to get awesome. out and make that money. You got to get that money that we, we missed on. Um, well, uh, oh, go- so back to Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. I have a question for you. Do you What's think up? Rocket had ever heard the term raccoon before? Yeah, that's where when you said that he's more robot, I realized that because he hasn't even he doesn't even know what the hell raccoon is. I mean, he knows what a vermin and a rodent is. I mean, he's he's got to be familiar with that. But a raccoon is a very specific thing. Uh, I, you know, I like the way in, in Guardians One, you you really feel his. He can feel rat rockets like kind of like misplacement or you know, and you get it in Volume Two when him and Yondu have that freaking conversation. Yeah. And Yandu calls him out because it's always is in the group of you know even when you're kids and younger and in, I mean if we get older it still happens there's always those group of uh, guys that they use um, they try to use humor to like or anger mix them you know to to not show their true colors or true what's really eating them and that's Rocket man like he doesn't want to care but he does it you know and he always blames her like it's one of those you know turns it on you just so you don't you always like are you always an asshole yeah you know what, what do you say is he, he's like, he's, he's like what are you a professional asshole or something he's like yeah I'm pretty much a pro. Yeah, 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 he's into it. Like he doesn't yeah. like, but he's always around. You know, he doesn't well, want to be alone without Groot. He's he's uh he's one of those one of those people that's always on because he has to be. It's like he always has to be. He always has to have something. Like if he doesn't, then he loses, and then that makes him feel inadequate. Because he has he has to be. He has to get that last word. He has to, you know, say that sarcastic, goofy thing. Um, you know, and just kind of be that. Is that lovable asshole that you have around? You know, he is very useful. Very useful. Oh, God, um, he is. He's very like, resourceful. But dude, he's good. He's good in all in every movie that Ro- uh, Rocket is in, and I mean these two, and then Infinity Wars and in yeah. Endgame. He is so useful. Oh, he doesn't really have a big part in Endgame, but in Infinity oh no, Wars, he does. He no, does. I right? mean, yes, yeah, goes, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, because he's like one of the gotta, few Guardians that's left. I think I gotta, the only Guardian that's left. Yeah, I got it backwards. Sorry, I was thinking they make. Um, Oh no no he makes the axe on the Infinity War and then but he brings yeah he needs them you're right because they all go away yep. and then he needs them because he's like he's like in that council like at the very beginning when they all meet it's like Captain Marvel uh, yeah. War Machine they're all talking to uh, Black Widow and he's one of them like he's a he goes down there and I think it's him and Thor that go. Yeah, him and yeah, they do because he, he they go to um, Asgard, go to, Asgard to get the eighth, the eighth uh, aether. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, so, so I'm saying like like rockets like he's very resourceful. You're right, dude. He's 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 probably one of the better of the guardians, and that's why well, I, feel, I guess that's why he feels like like Quill is kind of not the leader because even when Thor gets introduced to the, the mix, like Thor, they already gravitate to him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and then. Yo, know, whenever they meet uh, the guardian, Thor meets the guardians in Infinity War. Uh, he's like, "Yeah, my dad just died," and then Peter's like, "Well, yeah, I just had to kill my dad." You know, like <laughs> yeah, all this yeah. other stuff. Um, That's true. That's but true. and what's what's kind of cool about you know Rocket is you do see him progress from Guardians to where it's only him and Groot. Like he knows he can trust Groot. That's the one person he knows he can rely on. Yeah, and everybody else is just kind of, eh. but. A lot of people forget Groot's even a person in the in the first movie. Like, we'll spit it three ways. And he's like, huh? Yeah, you know, true. four ways, you know? And then whenever you whenever he's in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, they're just taking care of him. Because he, he's a he's a baby. He can't take care of himself. So they're just looking out for him the whole time. Yeah, so keep going. Oh no, I was I was just gonna say, um, yeah, it's a it's kind of interesting how you have have one version in one movie and then you know you you see a different Groot in each movie that he's in because then you get teenage Groot in Infinity War and but then he um he gets dusted along with I mean Rocket's the only guardian left yeah and Peter Gam- and, and, I mean and, and, Gamora's and I, dead you know so I guess that might be Rocket's motivation because in, in Infinity Wars you see him like no come on he, like he's like 
showing his emotion that he, you know, that he shouldn't have. Where he, I mean, he's yeah. a mammal. It's kind of well, crazy, right? Like, and and he knows to pair up with the Avengers. He knows that he is going to be better off in a group at this. Like he he was with the Guardians for long enough to know that he's going to thrive in a group rather than just go off on his own. Especially whenever half the universe, like, in in an. I mean, what was it in the first one? He's just like, let's get to the other end of the universe before they destroy it. You know, like he's yeah. looking to just hide out. And then by the time you get to end game, like he's he's willing to sacrifice, you know, his time and all this other stuff to help other people. It's a very interesting, uh, like, story arc to see a little, with all these characters, really. Um, and that's what's so cool about these movies too is like you have a lot of serious issues going on. Uh, you have Gamora with Thanos and Ronan where she's dealing with, you know, ethics and morals and stuff like that. And you see that where, and then she has to deal with uh, Peter Quills, AKA star Lord. Who's just like, no, I want all the money. And it's not till he's like, he realizes like, Oh shit, this is actually something that's really powerful. He's yeah. like, no, we we need to we need to take care of this. It's not until that happens that he is actually, and even even a little bit after that, he's he's looking for the money. So is Rocket. And, uh, well, that's their that's their motivation. And even when they actually find out what it is, it's still their motivation. But they <laughs> they, they, they they know they know that they have to do the right thing because it's also like, what do you want to do? A little bit of bad, a little bit of good, a bit of both. Um, no, whenever whenever Rocket's like, you've been carrying that in your purse this whole time. And it's like you didn't even know what it was. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, man. Rocket probably has some of the best lines. Uh, well, Rocket and Star Lord, man. Um, actually, they all have pretty damn good lines. You know, I nothing could go over my head. I would catch it. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, once you find, so that's what I like. Once you find out that Drax is like that. It's like yeah. they, they kind of work. That's it. It's it's like there there's no more intelligence. There's no more. It's it's. I mean, Drax Drax's character in Guardians Two is completely different in Guardian One. Like I was also saying, yeah. he has all that anger in him, and uh, he even like he goes up against Ronan and gets demolished. Like Twice. Ronan, Ro- yes, Ronan yeah. just wipes the floor with him. And here we're thinking that that he's the toughest one, strongest one, and he can just take him out. Like let's talk about Ronan for a second. That dude is freaking awesome. Like. To make a sub villain boss, I guess, or like a layer boss, and then you have the actual boss. If, if yep. this was a video game, like Ronan would be super hard. That's like fighting Montaro before you fight Shao Kahn in, in Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, you know, it's like, or I'm sorry, Kuntaro. It's like, it's damn near impossible. Even like Gor- Goru, um, Goro was hard to, to beat um, between Shang Tsung. Like, the, like, that's Ronan's, I want to say, he's the same level as Loki. From Avengers, same level as uh, Ultron. I would say I'd say he's even more leveled up than Loki. I would say probably about ten times leveled up from Loki. How about how about um, Ultron? Um, it'll be a comparable fight. I mean, get Ultron off Earth. I mean, how? <laughs> no internet. How well? Yeah, like <laughs> how how would it be able to function? So I I mean I'm sure they he could find a way but i mean ultron eh. okay mcu ultron no nah, he's fine ronan would whoop his ass um and even mcu loki i mean the loki from avengers is just a little oh man it's he did such a good job but he's just a little bitch is really what it is i mean he's he is he's ronan? backed up by no, no, Loki. Oh, Loki. Okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, he's he's backed up by an army that's not his. Um, and he's trying to play God on a planet that's going to get taken over by Thanos anyway. Is, like, he, is I, he like an assistant manager that gets the keys and he thinks like, he's got power? Yeah, yeah, no, Loki, Loki is somebody who's just like ego is running rampant. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy what he thinks he can do. And don't get me wrong, Loki's I mean, he is a god in in a sense, but <clears throat> even even that is what is a god? He's a god to the people on Earth, you know. That, like, that, that is that is that is that is extremely confusing because Loki wasn't birthed a god, but somehow he's a god through like 
adoption or like yeah. <clears throat> like yeah. that, that's sorry i keep doing the cussing the clearing the throat i gotta stop doing that oh i'm I doing it stop, too so we're I good gotta, we're i gotta good. stop apologizing too i'm just i'm like i'm um i'm thinking and then i'm like my turn to talk dry mouth <clears throat> let me clear it mm. clear, clear what, that I'm saying, dry mouth. what i'm saying about um <laughs> What I'm saying about so look at this Loki and Thor, a brothers and brother, and then we have Gamora, and then we have uh, Nebula. Which, by yep. the way, um, it wasn't until I saw Jumanji with Jack Black, <laughs> um, with um, was it The Rock and um, yep. who's the other one? Kevin Hart? Is it the other one? Kevin Hart, yep. And um, Karen, Karen, Gillian, what, Gillian, Gillian, yep. Dude, I was one. She's like five eleven. She's my height, which I was like, whoa. And two, she's like, I, once I saw her outside of the nebula, and then I went back because I saw, yeah, and then I saw her back as nebula. Like I saw Karen, and, uh, and I was like, wow, this chick's beautiful, but they make her look like crazy. And then like her her parts, like she's a great actress, man. Yeah, it's a great oh, actress. Yeah. When I when I found out that was uh, nebula, I was like, damn, that that's a that's a really great actor. Um, and the first Guardians, dude, she's so annoying. Like, and even there's there's one part at the end where she's walking through the dark aster and she's like, move out of my way. Like, you know, just like she's way over the top. She's way too intense in the first one. You know Even what in the getting, second one. What's up? You, you know what I do? You're really breaking this down for me. Thank you. Because yeah. the movies are longer than the two hours you're going to watch them. So they're sending character development on, down the line. Maybe this is why this is, equation works so well. Because yeah. you're right. The Gamora we first see and the Drax we first see, the Star-Lord we first see, even the Rocket we first see, not to mention the obvious Root group we first see, they're not the same in every movie. And I think that's why you get, wow. Um, I think, I mean, you, you own Infinity Gauntlet. You do, do you, you know that Nebula is the one that stops Thanos in the comics, right? No, I didn't. Yeah, no. she actually, yeah, she goes, she he takes it out. She takes it out on him. Like, look what you did to me. Then she ends up getting the, the glove falls off and she picks it up. She's right there and she messes it. Like, she's the one that's in, in one of the uh, universe, in one of the universes, I believe, one of the story lines. But mm -hmm. um, I think about that, the, you know, the Gamora and the Nebula relationship. And the more, I mean, it's so beautiful because you see that hate that Gamora has in, the, in, in Gardens of the Galaxy. And then you see their friendship as a, as a you know, siblings kind of start working it out. And then by the time you get, all the way to Endgame, and then you see in Gamora meets Star Lord again, and then there's Nebula saying like, "So you see, you know, Gamora's like, that's the idiot I'm supposed to love," and, and she's like, "Yeah," <laughs> like she's like helping her sister out, you know? Yeah. Which is which I think, in, in just a nutshell, that's awesome that you're able to take a character like that and just show this high, like sloping arc that's gonna eventually get to the point where you need to be. You have when you when you watch these movies, I don't know how, how you feel, but I watch them as a whole, but as Avengers to Endgame. Anything before those, the standalones, I like them as standalones, but as soon as you get into Avengers, it does like a ties the knot and it keeps it together. Yep. Um, you know, I, like I said, like I said before, Iron Man is my favorite MCU. Um, and maybe just my favorite, I mean, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. just kills the freaking role. Like, so, yep. it's so hard. He is Tony Stark. I mean, hey, yeah. it, they're, I got, they're one of the same. I don't know where, you know, the, I'm going to have to say his name. I, I forget it, but the, the actor from um, I was Deuce Bigelow, the first one, uh, Anton. He was supposed to be. Oh. I remember he was supposed to be Tony Stark, and then they had him with the short hair. And he's from um, Resident Evil too. And uh, I thought they were gonna put him in, and then um, he didn't. Um, they ended up getting Robert Downey Jr. at the last minute, or not? Or he actually Robert Downey Jr. ended up passing all the stuff. You know, he had a hard. He was hard for him to get the role, but he did everything. Fine colors, and when he got it, he landed. He killed it. And there's 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 interviews, you know, down the down the years because you know, like what twelve years ago. That he yep. said 11 years ago 13 years ago he goes um he says yeah i knew i got that roll down that it's mine that no it's mine mine is, you'd have to take it from me like you know yeah. like that that's some that's some awesome like just to hear as an as an actor um but seeing like you know seeing that uh seeing the growth of just like i mean robert Downey jr in general just seeing him grow as an individual and then just seeing all the stuff he's done up into uh, avengers like his career isn't avengers but no it's still best way to kind of like get towards your older self in your career let's dude he's like a 200 million dollar actor for you know killing it he he literally like i don't even i don't i know it's him and favreau they put the mcu on their shoulders yeah. and they lifted it and then you know uh foggy faggy foggy was foggy faggy faggy kevin, kevin faggy faggy yeah, you know, kevin yeah. faggy he he kind of took it from there but I, I honestly think without those two you wouldn't you wouldn't be here but I'm so glad we got to the Guardians of the Galaxy because this is 
the unique bunch of the, the yeah. out of the movies you try to see like that are ragtag these are these are good i honestly feel like uh, i mean they also have james gunn who wrote the first you know first two guardians which are brilliantly written and we're about to jump into guardians too man but uh i mean the it's a continuity works very well benicio del toro is in this as a collector yep. you know that's pretty cool you know he's part of the mcu and then you have uh i mean even the howard the duck at the end of the first one yeah <laughs> you know, he, he, go, he makes a he makes a sequel uh in the second one he's in there and he's like once you go duck you know you out of luck or something like that you know he's he's, he's even in uh avengers in game just a little snippet uh that's true that's, that's right that's right yeah, that's right they, i think they're, they're, they're trying to get howard the duck back um he yeah they right. well they were um they like i said modok and howard the duck were both going to be animated shows uh but modok was the only one that won out um yeah out of that bunch unfortunately Man, so that, before we move on to Guardians Two, let's do a little bit of the. Uh, let's do a little bit of the. Uh, I'm learning to interact. I forgot to set this up, but we'll do it anyways. Chris Pratt apparently stole his Star Lord costume for the from the set, for the sole purpose of having it available so he could show up to uh, in costume to visit sick children in the hospital. Wow, it's a great excuse to steal a costume. Yeah, thinking about I, I'm noticing <laughs> something about MCU about just Disney. Just I'm gonna throw this out. Disney really promotes stealing on all their movies. I just watched Cruella, and that's that's like they just you know I got it, so I'm gonna do I need to review. But man, it's like they, they do they do a lot of stealing, and then the Guardians they steal the whole time, you know? Like yeah, yeah, so, uh, bit of both. I actually I watched Raya and the Last Dragon the other day, and she's just uh, stealing pieces of a dragon gym the entire she's time. Stealing, so. yeah, they're they're okay with stealing. They're the uh, the mouse uh, is cool with you as long as you give it to him. The mouse is cool with it. This old long, mouse. We want you. Yeah, you have the Robin Hood effect. Yeah, give it. <laughs> the opposite stuff. Yeah, stuff from the poor and kid, or stuff from everybody. Just give it to the mouse. Just and then give we it got to the mouse. this other one here. According to James Gunn, a Star Lord's obscene gesture was improvised. Improv improvisation by Chris Pratt. Um, the little I don't know how this works. I don't know how. Yeah. And all this is trivia I'm finding off of IMDb. And, and they uh they had that in the trailer too, I remember that, but they they blurred it out. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, man. What was I gonna say? Oh God. God was jacking this. I'm trying to think of some stuff. Didn't know from oh, how about this one? What? All right. What? How about this one? No, Chris go Pratt, for it. Chris Pratt cites heroes Han Solo and Marty McFly as his influences on his performance at Star Wars. Hell it's yeah, true. dude. That's pretty cool. I mean, huh? he was he it was he left in eighty eight, so he was eight years old. So yeah, man, I bet you he was Marty McFly. Hell yeah, I, I bet got... you he felt like he was the coolest kid in the world. Oh yeah, he was growing up. You know, I like I like, and you find out the Star Lord story when you watch them back to back, like I did. Like, because yeah. remember, I watched this. You you watch it, and then you know you got to wait a couple years to see the second one. But when you watch them back to back like this, you really get to connect. And now that you're right, they're they're literally in the same year, in the '88. It's like, oh wow, yeah. we got another one right here for you. Star Lord's line. If I had a that's flight, that's from the that's from the second one. Hold off on that one. Oh, that's for the second one. Yeah. Uh, oh wait, was it? No, no, this is the first one, dude. Star Lord's line. If if I had a black light, this place would look. Like oh, like that's Sample right. Painting. Yeah. It was ad lib by so Chris Pratt put that in there. Oh man. So that's that's pretty great. I like that. Your 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 ship is filthy. Oh, I love that first sequence too, where he doesn't even realize that that chick's on his <laughs> ship. He's like, honestly, I forgot you were here. She Dude, just looks at him like, oh. You know, I'll t I'll tell you. Um, that's kind of gives you the whole thing that Chris that the Star Lord's into into like colored, uh, multicolored, or and then you know even even um, freaking uh, Drax he goes you man who slayed with a Savorian. He's like oh, yeah, ask her. Ask her one time, man. Well, you time. think I'd be attracted there? They have teeth, you know. <laughs> like, teeth. They have teeth like, like they still did it, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go with yeah. Like he's like like yeah, the Star Lord character, um, man. So one one question I have written down: He didn't open that present for twenty six years. He didn't open up that that cassette, like, and obviously he had to open up the the card because she calls him the Star Lord, and that's that's where he gets his name. Um. I didn't even pay attention. He get it from he got his name from his mom. Yeah, man, it says the I didn't even pay attention. Yeah, to that. is um because at the end she's he's reading the the note and it's like in oh, her voice true, instead of my little Star Lord. Um, but I know for a long time, like right after it came out, uh, 
I was thinking, I know this sounds stupid, but I was like, maybe Yondu is his dad. And, you know, it's like, I know I'm pretty as an angel. And like his mom says that at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then they even say, it's like, oh, I was going to give him to his dad. Oh, that guy was a jackass. And then, <laughs> that guy. Um, Michael Roker. I love that. Yeah. Oh, who is also a repeat offender. Repeat um, offender. Sorry, I didn't know that. And then, oh, man. Let's see here. Dance. Oh, at the end, when uh, Dance Off, bro, is like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm distracting you, tur- big turd blossom. Um, <laughs> so, also, was it... Uh, so whenever they're they're all holding on to the power uh, stone or power gem or whatever it is, um, the, it's like a big vortex going around them, right? So it's just Ronan and them in this like sphere and everybody else is just outside of it, not knowing what's going on. So they're literally the only ones that know what happened in there. You know, I didn't even oh, kind of they realize. Just, they just showed up and then they're well, like, what? What's that? Oh, like all about the like, like the, the 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 plane the the the, the battle happens the, the ship crashes and then they're you're right it happens so fast like people stand by are gonna be like what the hell? Well, and another thing too is like whenever the he has the power gym it just like creates like a tornado around him you know so yes, it's man. like blocking the view of everybody so literally they they destroy Ronin and nobody sees it so you know what I'm saying but they obviously they're like oh yeah Ronin's dead. Possibly. I don't know. I don't know what the power gem did to him because he had already held on to it. That may be something they come back to in the MCU. Who knows? Doubtful. But I'll tell you one thing. Whenever Red Skull came out in Infinity War, I was so happy. I was like, they better bring Red Skull back in Infinity War, and they did. Um, but it's but it's not it's not Hugh. Um, it's someone. I don't else. I don't care. I don't care. I just want to see Red Skull. No, no, you're was, right. You're right. That's like that's one of the, that's one of the continuity things they didn't they didn't keep, which is very very uh, kind of rare for. Yeah, uh, for but uh, you could get away with it because yeah, it's you know, CGI. It's whatnot. CGI. Need, need like the voice. Um, also, why was was that the store owner the the one who was like the broker? He was out there whenever they were fighting Ronan yeah. too. I was like, well, how the hell did he show up here? Um, <laughs> let's see here. I like the the not a hundred percent dick, uh, and then whatever he's they got my dick message. Like I love that part too. <laughs> that's right. Um, that's right. <laughs> some of these lines in here are just like so so damn good. Um, keep going, keep going. Yeah, no. Uh, the the very end, whenever he's uh, he says, uh, well, I think it's like Korath or something like that. He. Uh, he comes up and he's like, Star Lord. And then uh, Star, uh, Peter's like, finally. And then he starts fighting uh, and all that. I I love that part. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. He gets his name right. Oh, but it's yeah, the same gets, guy. Yeah, it's the same guy. And he's just like, fine. Like, is, he's been waiting for somebody Technology. to be like, Star Lord, you know? like, And just like take him on. He's like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for, man. Like, I'm finally known. <clears throat> and... Um, so I think that's really cool. Um, you also one of my one of my kind of favorite lines out of Guardians is whenever Rocket gets uh, the the gun in prison, he's like, "Oh yeah." yeah that's awesome. And so I'll, I'll do that from time to time. Like, if, <laughs> oh yeah, like it's it's like an old, like inside joke for me. Dude, um, I think, uh, yeah, the I think we all got that, huh? That's like a great quote. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, let's move on to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I have you, a few cool notes think, in this one as well. Do you think that, um, uh, what you say in general, on Rocket as Bradley Cooper, do you think they wrote him that well, or do you think Bradley Cooper's performance just sticks out? Because he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a freaking... I think it's a, a bit of both. I think it's kind of like... Character, end of, you know? He's not yeah. there. <laughs> and Sean Gunn, who does uh, Kraglin, uh, is, I think is the person who does the anime. Uh, animation for Rocket, at least in the second one. I don't. It may oh, be he's, he's wearing the uh, he's wearing the <clears throat> the the suit. Yeah, uh, and it may be Bradley Cooper in the first one. I don't know. It may. I think it may. Yeah, it just says voice Rocket Raccoon well, voice. From, yeah, from move on, we'll say uh, Lee Pace was uh, Ronin. 
Yeah. And uh, I found this out. Look at this. Zoe Zaldana wanted to portray Gamora through makeup rather than computer graphics, image, uh, imagery, or performance captured. So that means that they were going to have her put the, uh, the CGI on, and she was like, nope. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Or Okay, so we, uh, we're moving on to... Um, we're moving on to uh, Guardians 2, and we get that going. But before I get that going, uh, you said who? who Sean, Sean Gunn or Shane Gunn? Who did you say? Sh- uh, Sean Gunn. Uh, Sean it's going to be Craglin. It's uh, James Gunn's brother. Uh, but he's, okay, the, yeah. he's, the, he's, he's the one who's like, he, in the second one, he's the one who starts the mutiny by accident. Do you see, you see what like, I got in front of you? Let's see here. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, this is yeah. my. This is actually my first. Um, I guess uh, selfie or table type. So I messed this up, man. Uh, I didn't know that this is my very first like comic. I didn't know who to talk. He was just looking at there. He waved to me, and I said, "Hey, what's up?" And I just walked up to him. I shook a hand, and he goes, "You want to take a picture?" I go, uh, "Yeah." And he goes, "All right, cool, man. Take a picture with me." And I had my cousin Art with me, so he took the photo. And then I'm walking away, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's cool." And he goes, "Hey, so what's up?" I go, what? He goes, yeah, what's up? What's up with you, man? Are you from here? What's going on? I was like, you're, you're talking to me? <laughs> I was like, oh, crap, he's talking to me. Like, I felt so bad. Like, I talked to him for, like, two minutes, but he was, like, trying to hold a conversation with me. And I was like, I, am I supposed to do this? Is is this okay? I don't I don't know. But once I learned the rules, I realized I totally blew it. So if I see him again, I'm going to have to get a signature from him. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> this was uh, 2018. This is my, my first official uh, Comic-Con. It was a huge one in San Antonio, but... Uh, it was pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah, it was cool meeting him, but I wish I would have would have spoke to him uh, more. But he's a more of an intricate. I feel you're right. He starts a mutiny by accident, yeah. And in, in the Guardians too. Well, and, and he's uh, he's just kind of he's fed up, man. Like Peter Quill is kind of like the favorite. I, that is John Doe's boy, you know. Uh, but true, true. Yeah, I can see it's it's very understandable where he's coming from, but it definitely kind of gets out of hand for him. Um, well, you know, but you know what? It's an accident, man. Yeah, it's a, it's an emotion that he has, and look what it does. It really it just, does, and it and it kills. It kills my my good old acting friend Tommy Flanagan. You know about Tommy Flanagan, right? He's got the. He's like a man. I wouldn't even want to see as a B roll actor. He gets a lot of great. He's from Sense of Anarchy. He's. Done, I think I know who you're talking about. He's got a scar he's, on the side of his face too, man. Like, um, I think he's also in. Um, I think he's the villain from Ocean. I mean, uh, from uh, Smoking Aces. The I think yeah, because Tommy Flanagan. He's, he's one of them. Yeah, it's been in Braveheart, all that stuff. Oh, God, oh he's yeah, in he's Westworld. In, nice. Yeah, he's been around, dude. Tommy Flanagan, dude. That, but then they just he has that small role, but they literally just threw him out the air pocket, and so you get to see what happens. You know, they just remind you when you go outside. You know, of the uh, yeah. air airlocks, what happens. But that's a crazy ass. Like that's just that's insane. That's really like I like seeing that because well, mob mentality. That's it's worse, man. And you know and, what's crazy, man, is like that's the equivalent of getting. You know, shoved off the plank. You know, it is. It is, and at the same time, it's also like mom and tell you, or like um, just somebody like getting a whole bunch of people against you. Yeah, you walk the plank. That's the that's because they're still on the ship, but that's the yeah. the space version. You're walking the plank. So in walking the plank in space, you're it's a probably immediate death because you're there's no air. Walking wow. the plank in, in the ship, you think they're gonna have to wait till like there's something that's like sharks or something. They just throw it in the water. It's like oh, that would suck though, man. Like I can't watch those movies. Can you watch those movies? Like open was it open space or something? Or open like oh no, open water no. Open water. I cannot do that. That's those are I I can't watch them in the theaters. It's harder for me to watch them in the theaters than watching them on TV. But man, just, they make they feel so that claustrophobic, that loneliness. That oh man, those movies are pretty bad. But uh, but not like this one. Uh, but I did like how he uh, Cracklin he uh, kind of accidentally, but he even even in that little bit he grows because he even he even gives onto the the prototype and he says they killed all my friends. Like yeah. And he's like, get him. And then that that arrow, I don't know how tough that damn arrow is, but it is freaking tough. Yeah. It's uh I have a question for you. Does Mary Poppins Mary, Mary Poppins does she ever whistle? No, it's the it's the uh, her when she comes off like the roof and stuff, she has the umbrella and it makes her go down like that. And then that's how uh Yandu has his um has his arm up, like has it up. Oh, I I mean I, I get the reference in the second one. I was just curious because he whistles and it sounded like something that it sounded like a Mary Poppins song in the first one. Uh, and maybe I, there is something I, there. I didn't know, like I was like, I was trying to think. I didn't know if you knew off the top of your head. Does like does she ever whistle? I know she sings and everything like that, but it just kinda like kind of sounded like that, but I I, I could be wrong. 
I don't um, think. I mean, I could. I got. I haven't seen Mary Poppins in a minute. Uh, but you're kidding me, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, oh darn! Sorry, did I play that? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, and one thing I wanted to go. I, I, I want to go back to Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, vol. We'll we'll just call it Volume One. Um, real quick. There's one thing that Rocket says that is very, very mean, but very profound. <laughs> uh, he says, everybody's got dead people. That doesn't give you a right to be a jackass. <laughs> and, and, you know, you you have Groot and he's like, oh, you know, and that's like what everybody initially thinks too. You know, it's like, oh, that's so mean. And he's like, but it's true. You know, it's very true. Like Rocket's very practical. And, but he has yeah. to be like, he's very just like, he's sarcastic and he's mean and everything like that. But he, he does it with love, you know, he does it with, uh, do you, with some, some kind of version of love. I don't really know exactly what it is, but you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think, do you think, cause, yeah, keep going. Oh no, no, no. Do you think it's cause he's a, he's a robot and he's learning about love? Is that, is that something that because you the more you're talking about the more I'm starting to see his his character is he gets angrier and angrier but he shows so, more love he shows more love you know I think I think uh, I think Rocket has a soul he's just learning how to use it you know I think that's what it is yeah is yeah right. he's I'm he's a robot he's a, yes he is a robot but he is uh, he's something that is like sentient is aware of what's going on. And has a soul and is learning how to how to deal with that. I don't think he's had a soul his entire life. I don't know exactly when he got it, but it, does that make sense? It sounds kind of mm -hmm. strange. No, but. I mean, he's, I mean, it's kind of you're right. Maybe the raccoon did have a soul inside. But what I'm just talking about, just by your, your what you're just breaking down, I'm like, wow, I never thought about Rocket. He's pretty deep, man. No, like, no, we, he we, is. We, he's... we can pick up on it, but can we really like? You know, like, can we see it? Yeah, you see it in all these movies. I mean, granted, he's trying to bring back some everything. Everything he, he does kind of uh, direct affects him, which I I'm I'm that kind of guy. So, um, but he's making he's making do what he has. You know, he does what he has to do. Yeah. Um, um, but we can we can go back to the second one. I I have some some notes on that as where well, uh, whenever whenever the first opening credit pops up and you see it's like it says Missouri and then it pauses for a second and then goes Earth. In 1980. So, the first thing I thought of when it first part, uh, popped up and says Missouri and then Earth underneath is like <laughs> whenever Tony and uh, uh, Peter meet for the first time, he's like, I'm from Missouri. Yeah, that's on Earth. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is on Earth. Uh, another thing, too, man, is there are like three different songs playing in the first 15 minutes. And two of them, you get a good chunk of the song. Like Brandy and Mr. Blue Sky, you get a good chunk of the song. And then you have LSD um, as well. That's playing, I think, like 12 minutes or something like that. Yeah. I don't know of any other movie they could pull that off and it still be a good movie, you know? Yeah. Because a lot of movies that are just like putting a lot of songs or try to make a... Like this is one of the few movies where the soundtrack goes along with the movie and kind of progresses the movie forward. Like whenever you get to Ego's Planet, you have that song, My Sweet Lord, and you kind of get the idea that, okay, like Ego Ego thinks of himself as a god, stuff like that. Um, you know, Mr. Blue Sky, man, that's a fun song to open up to. And then you have Baby Groot just dancing around. Like, yeah. It's yeah. it's a fantastic opening scene. Even the Brandy uh, scene where you, you first – get um you know ego and meredith together and then you see like okay he planted this here you see the dairy queen you see that old ass dairy queen you see what well, he's driving a trans am blue trans am or something like that yeah um and so it's just it's a beautiful first team 15 minutes you know it's a beautiful movie altogether but just in those first 15 minutes you get so much you know, it's just a a dump of information. Um, and then you just move right on into this movie. And it it doesn't miss a beat, man. It's just hitting it one right after the other, one right after the other. Yeah, this movie. And, and this has like a mystery vibe to it, too, because you're understanding what, what ego is, you know? 
Dude, and, and, and you should, I mean, you have the sovereign that are kind of like the villain a little bit, but like, I remember watching this in theaters and I was like, I didn't, I didn't think of Kurt Russell as bad. Like it just didn't click until it actually happened. It was like, what? And I just got so lost into the movie, man, that I wasn't thinking about anything like that. I wasn't like trying to figure it out. I was just enjoying it. I was yeah. just enjoying the movie. And that 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 kind of rarely happens, especially with the MCU movies, man. I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the next, you know, uh, what's the next thing that's going to happen? Blah, blah, blah. And very rarely do I just like let myself just get into the movie and get lost in it yeah. uh, as, as easily as I did in that one. Um, I met one of my favorite parts in MC or in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two right now. It's kind of like the hero shot uh, that you have in Avengers and everything, and it's like they get all of them together, and you have them all, and it's this great shot, and you get it for a second, and then Mantis yeah, they- gets hit, and then and then you have Trax saying, "Mantis, look out!" Yeah, they're right and after it, and it's just like it's almost poking fun at being a, ser- a superhero movie, you know. It's, yeah, like like it's out of it's out of context. Like he's supposed to say yeah. Mantis looks out, then she gets hit, but she gets hit, and then he says Mantis look out. Yeah, well, and that too, and like you have that like superhero shot, you have that like still shot, and everything like that. Everybody's teaming up. It was like the Avengers, kind of like whenever they're yeah, they have they you have, have, have all own. the Avengers. Yeah, exactly. But then this one's goofy, so you have her getting knocked out by the little asteroid or whatever's going on there. Um, Mantis, by the way, without makeup and everything like that, very good looking, very yeah, good looking. I think Mantis is look good looking as Mantis. <laughs> like, I, like, you know, I feel like you got th- just... it. You got a thing for the antennas, huh? I think I gotta say, man. Also, someone very empathetic. I, I'm gonna just let's, let's, let's get it over with. Let's just get it all out. Um, you know, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at Guardians of the Galaxy. Both uh, both um posters are really cool they speak a lot and, and they're really nicely made I, nebula is in guardians of the galaxy volume 2 which i thought i was like, whoa she's there and then i look at all the stuff they have around this, this kind of tells a story but it shows like kind of like teleporting kind of thing and i do remember when i was in college uh for my motion graphics we um we got into like this whole like galaxy and nebulas and making all this stuff and i really got into it and then when i saw volume 2 i don't know when i saw volume 2 i didn't think much i i kind of i didn't leave with a bad taste in my mouth i was like is it, was there, there too much? What was going on? I'm, I'm kind of all over the place. I, I didn't like that Drax kind of got set off on the side tra- uh, uh, trek uh, story. And then you had um, Gamora and, and Nebula's little issue. And then you have like, you know, but then I realized, I was like, I didn't think about it as a mystery. It's kind of a mystery. Yeah. Um, they're trying to figure out who Ego is this whole time they're on this planet, which is him. And, and then you get the real feeling of like Ego dies and blows up. And then, uh, you know, freaking, I didn't even realize that um, Yondu, like, has to go off because the planet's going to lose its atmosphere. You know, it's imploding. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, like, they, they couldn't survive because it's not, they can't breathe. Like, it's, it's going to go from being on a planet to non-existent. And I did like how, how uh, Ego looks at the end where he's all grayed out and there's all this color. Yeah. That's pretty, like, he's, he's just ancient or old. And, man, he's been trying, so he had been trying to figure that out for a long time, the pattern, and uh, he found it through Quill. And then on, on Quill, um, the Star-Lord, does he lose his powers when his dad dies? Because you kind of see it leave him, and then you don't ever bring it back up again in Infinity, War, Infinity Wars, you know? You'd assume that he has some kind of, he is a celestial being. Uh, oh, so he, he is, he is going to have some sort of powers, but... He does mention that if there's no light on the planet, then you you will lose your powers. Uh, but how do you know that? You know, well, no, but you see, you see it, that? you see it in Guardians too. You see it when his hands, when his dad dies, his hands, it like the blue like goes away from the body, like it's, it's yeah. leaving him. So yeah, so, but and, I, I, and they don't bring, I, they don't bring it up in Infinity Wars. They don't bring up his powers at all. No. So I'm assuming it's gone. I'm assuming that I, it, I would think it's going to be one of those. You had the power all along, and you kid well and this unless they bring it back in the third one and we see it which i'm that's I, what i'm wondering i wonder if I they're gonna they go were. there out I don't, I don't think they are i honestly think that it looks like he act, lost his powers when his dad died um uh, but i would like to see that because i, I want to see how you can grow like because it really got to me i was like he's a god why didn't he fight thanos he can't die can he you yeah. know like like you know the i don't know man that that scene in infinity wars where star lord like they almost have the glove off and he he no, he's he's the reason he's it's the been... reason man He's a reason yeah. for for the snap and uh, well he gets Gamora back but we don't get 
you know, you, you no. get like a few other char- characters back, but yeah, um, man, it's a yeah, because what I was thinking was Star Lord and his father. Um, I mean, I like that scene. You guys have issues, of course we do. That's my freaking father. <laughs> like, yeah. it's just ego, like all blue, and so we'll see, man. We'll see what they got. But um, I like that when ego ego passed on and then everybody everybody's kind of doing their own thing and then you have like that whole scene with him and yandu like he may not be your father but i'm your daddy like he was there for him you know but he but he like showed him all this bad thing it's it's a parenting there's a parenting vibe in this movie too um i i don't know how i always <laughs> feel about you know mcu killing off their villains they, they talk about that a lot how do you yeah. how do you feel about that they always they kill off all their villains like, well loki finally died well he's back now but oh, yeah like um they didn't kill off the abomination they didn't kill off the leader. Um, they killed off Obadiah Stane. Um, which is funny because Tony Stark makes a... I, I, just, I was watching Endgame earlier. Um, he mentions... Whenever he sees Thor, he's like, get out of my way, Lebowski. Uh, so, reference to Obadiah Stane slash Jeff Bridges. <laughs> um, yeah, right? Deep cut there, buddy. Um, let's see. I guess you really didn't kill Red Skull. Um, who's the main villain in Thor? He got teleported, Loki. right? Well, no. Yeah. He, he, he comes back, but is he dead? Is he in the underworld? Who? Red, Red Skull? Skull? Yeah. No, no, no. He got, he just got transported and then he was, uh, he was like, the, it's kind of like the hubris. Like, oh, you want to, you want to rule the galaxy? No, you're going to be sent here to Vormir to rule after the soul stone you want to be around these stones so much we'll yeah <clears throat> we'll give you this task um so let's see here i guess crossbones got killed off ultron got killed off uh yeah ronin got killed off Thanos ego got killed off. thanos got killed off. um well let's, i'm going backwards let's see let's see well even you uh, still have you Black still have Bash. the mint Blackbeard uh, gets, you know, does he? Character. Yeah, he gets killed. Um, you still have the Mandarin, which and we're gonna see in Shang Chi. Yeah, but the Ben Kingsley version isn't coming back. Oh, so uh, but, is, is but he like it's someone else. no, no, it's there. There's someone else. There was a Marvel one shot where they uh, they were breaking Ben Kingsley's character out of prison, and they were gonna go show him the real Mandarin. Oh, uh, okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong, but it that's that's kind of the it's kind of the thing like I I think they're kind of just you can't bring it's your like the, back, you know? You can't You, you can. You, Why can't you? Oh, I mean, you uh, this is the thing. You got to stay away from the infinity loops. You could always bring or take away somebody. Once you get stuck in the loop, you're in a loop. We found that well, like like a uh, you know, like you said, army of, of the dead. You know, he's like, once you're, uh, are we not in this loop? Like, it feels like you can't get out of it once you go that route. Yeah, I mean, but I'm, I, I feel like with with where they're at right now, they can, um, they have enough writers. They have enough. They have a good enough team where they can write themselves into a corner, but they can write themselves out as well. Well, so you know? loop. I just feel it's, it. It doesn't matter. It's you can always. Say like here, but what I'm saying, uh, yeah. Well, I guess you're right because you could bring back Ultron. You yeah. could bring back. You could always bring back somebody. Like you could, you could bring back. You know, I, that's that's what I thought was going to happen in Infinity War was that Thanos was going to snap back all the villains, and then you have uh, everybody ganging up against one one another. Dude, the, that was the, that was one thing that I thought might happen, but yeah. the build up to Infinity War, man, that one. Like you need you need the Guardians to get there. Yeah. And then the buildup for Endgame was like, whoa. But now that I watched this one, Volumes again, and watched it again, I, I made more sense to me. Now, I, I think you got to watch this movie twice to really... And, but after you watch it, like, watch it, as watch the whole MCU, and then and when you go back and watch this one, like, it makes more sense to me now. Like, you have more more depth, more more context um, to, to kind of, like, see, like, why... I mean, it, this is good writing. I got to say, James Gunn can write his ass off, man. This is... Yeah. This is... It, it's, so the reason I have to think that they kill off the villains, I mean, this is like it's like the end of an episode. You know, this they they aren't these aren't movies, these are episodes. And so I mean you're you have one you you, you have Thanos that's set up in twenty twelve. 
right? And then mm-hmm. he doesn't die until 2019, so seven years later. You know, um, well, I guess, yeah, 2018, 2019. Um, so you do have that character. I mean, that character or that villain has longevity. And then you have all these, it's like, it's kind of like you said, Thanos is the boss. And then you have all these other little, you know, yeah. villains that you have to knock off. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, there's, you're, you're kind of right. They don't have anybody that makes it like to the next, next stage. Really? They don't. And uh, I, I think all, that's all like, too often. If you keep your villains alive and they get away, they can always come back in another, they get another movie for a small, small part. You know, they kind of did it with a uh, scarecrow. He and Batman uh, mm-hmm. and Christopher Nolan's, you know, he's not, he's in the first one. He's the main villain in the first one. He doesn't come out in the second one. And then, or I think he comes out a little bit in the second one. And then he comes no, he, out again. Yeah, he does. I think it's a small cameo. And then he, then he comes out again in the third one for a lot. So it's like, they kind of bring the scare, Scarecrow character, kind of leave him in there, which I thought that was a pretty brilliant. But if you had like the MCU, which 23 movies, you have a lot, man. Well, um, and also from just a movie perspective, I mean, say, uh, I guess, uh, I wouldn't, I would, well, Mickey Rourke at that time in 2010, he's just coming off the wrestler and he just, he's kind of on a comeback. So he could probably get a little bit more money. You, you would think that, uh, if, if you're going to get big name actors, like to be your villains that you wouldn't want to keep on paying them, you know, unless they're a really good villain, uh, like you getting Kurt Russell to play, you know, which ego, I I do. He had to, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Kurt Russell is another repeat defender there. Um, I actually I went to see if Sean Gunn was in uh, Dawn of the Dead as a zombie. I was really hoping that he could be a repeat defender too. Was he? Um, a- no, he wasn't. Oh, um, I know. Um, well, yeah, man. These you- I, that's that's interesting about the, the villains. But what did you? Do? Oh, sorry. Keep on. No, no, no. What did you think about Before- Kurt Russell's CGI in the beginning? Oh, it's. It was fantastic. I thought it was. I thought it was believable. I really did. I think uh, a lot of this stuff is very passable. Um, I think it looks. It looks like a person, but I, I mean, it's kind of. I feel like it'd be like it's kind of I mean, off Kurt Russell, but it's hard. What is he like? He was like sixty three or something. How old was he when he did this? Oh God, yeah, at least. So man looked thirty because because I know that the the Irishman they did it with uh, De Niro and like um, mm. Pacino. Yeah, and that that's that's uh it's a few years down the road too cuz let's see what that's 2017 and then 2020. But see, they had just the Irishman had just used it from they used it from something else. Yeah, well, they had they had seen it. They the technology got into the point where Martin Scorsese was like, "Okay, I can use this for my movie and we're going to we're going to like the the software was crazy good. I'm trying to think what movie they used for because it was like I don't think anything is Benjamin Button, but that was like that was 2008 or something. Yeah, so, I don't yeah. think it was that. Now you can you can even tell a difference in the you know the CGI from uh, Kurt Russell and the CGI from um, Endgame. You know, whenever they de-age um, Michael Douglas and uh howard stark Man. you know you can you could see it. it's even better at that point so yeah. two years later i mean it's gotten it's gotten better so <clears throat> i mean this isn't the this isn't the first step uh you know like thing of de-aging but it's kind of like on its way i it, obviously yeah i think it definitely looks like it's uh it's animated but i think it i mean for that little bit yeah, I'll take it. Man, I'll take dude, it. Dude, I, you, I like you, it. You brought up Hank Pym, dude. That does. That's crazy. Like the whole movie. Yeah, you know, even a uh, freaking um, Nick Fury in in a uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah. The whole movie. And uh-huh. I I saw something compared to like old older Samuel Jackson to younger Samuel Jackson, and the face was completely like like different. The shape of the face was different. Yeah, a fuller face. He was, yeah. But yeah. and that's the cool thing about it too is you have so much reference reference from Jackson in the nineties, yeah. you know. Uh, so you can go back and do that. And plus, I mean, to be fair, that that man is aged like fine wine. He's oh, he's dude, done he's, very. He's, he's got a he, nice yeah complexion. And what's crazy, dude, is like he can look. 
Okay, so you see Samuel Jackson, 1993, in Jurassic Park. And he looks totally different than he does in Pulp Fiction, or hell, even Jackie Brown. Um, Dude, no, all those characters, like he, he does look completely different. Even when, I mean, yeah. where is he at? He's also in, um, he's in Harlem Nights. He looks kind of weird in the late '80s and the early '90s. Samuel Jackson looks older than he does now. Yeah, no, he. I, it looks like he's doing drugs back then. To be quite, uh, quite I honest, I get you. I get you. Not, I, not I'm, saying that he was, but he just has that that look about him you know yeah the scraggly kind of like a little bit a little tired and yeah um (laughs) yeah tired uh, i guess is a nicer way to say that he looks like he's on drugs he's tired well uh, you're talking to somebody (laughs) that that has gone through experience (laughs) um the uh taser face is that gonna be the best scene with rocket Mm -hmm. is does that whole like spiel makes fun of him about like oh i think that gets me is you wake (laughs) up every morning and you tell yourself, oh, I'm laser. <laughs> like, no, I mean, it's close, but it's whenever they're trying to get the fin from Groot. Uh, oh, I think the, that's the, I think that's the best rocket scene. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that I, made me laugh. The, the other the, when, when he Groot's going because that's a kind of a combination of Groot and uh, and Rocket. I like the way that that Taser face. He's just digging into him. He's just he's just going <laughs> you know, in there. It'd be and, a great name, Taser face. <laughs> There's a whole thing about uh, about Taser Face too. I had I came up across it a couple years back. I thought that was funny. Um, I mean, dude, Michael Roker and John Dudes are really I like. I mean, he's our, he's offended here from all rats. Yep. But but man, he's he he is a great actor. The way he holds himself like that. He made he made this character. I, I want to. I can't remember John Dudes from the comics too well, but I, I want to go back and look at it and why well, have him just to see how he, how he was again because. He he has more like a, a bow and arrow kind of thing, and they kind of modernized them. And plus, he had the mohawk back when he came out in the comic, and then they gave it to him in the second one. But I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't want Yondu to die. But I guess it was, it's, it's integral for for his character. Yeah, yeah, you need him. And even at that, he goes, it's, you got those jacked up teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you get a professional asshole or something? Um, yeah, one one. One little joke that I like from the beginning is like, uh, give me a piece of that yarrow plant. It's not ripe. It's not oh. ripe. You know, she keeps on getting told it's not ripe. And then whenever she uh, blows Yondu's head off and then she eats a piece, like she spits it ripe. out. It's not ripe. You know, so I, I like those little jokes too. Uh, a whole lot. Um, yeah. One thing in Guardians too, uh, Chris Pratt, whenever his dad tells him he can build stuff, he's like, Oh, there's gonna be Heather Locklear. No, and this is like I'm gonna build a lot of weird shit. Just like the way he <laughs> says it, man, is just like he sells it so well, man. I, I think he that really might does. be an ad lib. On, I, I on really that. hope. I think it is oh, too. Yeah, and I really hope so. It's very, very Chris Prattish. Oh, I forgot Cheddar Bob's in this movie. In, in Guardians too. He's a villain, or like a, he's one of the. Uh, oh God, what what is a uh, what is John Dew's crew? Ravages. Uh, Ravages, yeah. He's a uh, he's in there. You remember Cheddar Bob, right? From Eight Mile. No, no. He's in, yeah. So he's the guy that shoots himself in the in the leg. He pulls out the gun there when they get rolled up on, and he and he and he, they go Cheddar Bob, you gotta shoot yourself, and he does shoot himself. What is this? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's the one. That? Like, should we should we kill the plant? No, he's too adorable to kill. Take him to the tailor. Uh, that's right yeah. let me see i felt oh, him I earlier I, I know who you're exactly what you're talking about now give him a proper, a sh- proper shout out yeah. here um because also it says i came across miley cyrus has a uh has a character yeah, in here. she's that little robot at the end oh and ving rames is another repeat oh offender. yes he plays charlie 27 yep uh, i found that out and that's a re- that's a repeat offender but charlie 27 in the comics is white and Ving Rames is playing him. so that's pretty cool they got a, like a crossover there uh, he's a big, strong, like uh, his power. You know, that's his, he's powerful. So I, I hope they use him. I hope he comes out in the third one. That'd be cool. He's one of the original I, Guardians. I think. I think we are going to see because uh, they even said they're going to start stealing some shit. So there's probably going to be a heist or something like that. That'd be kind of cool. Um, do, you, do you think the third one's going to be based around that? I think so. I, do you think it's going to be like another heist? Um, I don't really know how or what kind of uh storyline they're gonna go with it's it's um 
Oh, it's kind of hard to tell at this point. <clears throat> Just apparently, because you... What's that? No, I was saying apparently the freaking Seth Green was out with the duck. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I... Oh, excuse me. That's all right, man. We had a long day. I, yeah, I... um. I'm not too sure where where the story goes from here. You know, what what are we going to explore next? You know, Gamora's and father's already dead. Plus, it's a new Gamora. Um, we've already kind of gone through a Rocket story arc. We've done a Peter Quill story arc. Um, what are we going to do? Drax? I mean, that, I mean, they have said that Dave Bautista, this is his last Guardians movie, that he's going to be replaced. Uh, so, a.k.a. they're probably going to kill him off. Or bring another Drax uh, version, huh? Possibly. I mean, they are going to have multiverse uh, and all that by the time we get Guardians of the Galaxy three. Uh, so it's it's kind of. I really don't know what the storyline would be there. I would imagine that you would have Stallone uh, come back, and that would be kind of cool. But um, Stakar, I think, was his name. Yeah, Stakar. Um, yeah. Also, oh, uh, probably Adam Warlock. Yeah, you, that, that I mean, uh, you would hope, you would really, really hope. So here on the screen, I got uh, Baby Groot is actually the offspring of Groot, not the same character um, as confirmed by James Gunn on Twitter, where he posted, first Groot is dead, Baby Groot is his son." So he's just uh, so so. If Baby Groot gets hurt, and he spawns, there'll be another version. Um, and we all know that Vin Diesel said every line. I am Groot. It's not a repeat. It's his. He does every line. They paid him to do every line. <laughs> um, here we go. Look at this one. Bradley Cooper recorded his lines for Rocket while wearing a motion capture headpiece in the recording studio to perfectly synchronize Rocket's uh, voice and facial expressions. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time, he just did a voiceover. Now, they actually did the... So, you'll get more of Bradley Cooper's expressions on Rocket this, this go around. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? I got, I got another one in here. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, I picked this one, but I can't say her name very well. Their last name very well. One reason Elizabeth the the Bicky was cast yeah. as 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 Aisha was her because of her height. The actress stands at six foot two and a half. During filming, she wore platform shoes to increase her height to six foot seven. That's the main villain, or the one of the yeah. The, dude, she's tall. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the, the role, I, I, I didn't, the thing about that high council, the how Evan Jones is Cheddar Bob's name, sorry, the, he plays Wretch in this one, um, but the thing about the, the high, that was kind of like, that's kind of funny, man, the snooty people that are, that they, that, I think what they say, they built their, those people to, to be perfect or something like that. Yeah. That's yep. the sovereign. Funny. Yeah. The sovereign. There you go. Yeah. Um, now that, that, that those whole people are like, if they get mad, like, like that part's like, come on, you can do it, you can do it. And then he, he, he feels like, oh, you suck. <laughs> it's like they're all just there watching that guy try to take down the Guardians. On um, and the Milano, man, the Milano's a great, great shit, man. I'm, I think very Millennium Falcon ish, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, and even even stays on through uh, Infinity War and Endgame and all that stuff, too. Um, I have a question for you. Why do you think uh, Ego aged himself? He wanted to feel like a father figure. Or maybe mm. he's just getting older. Maybe he's dying out because the gray at the end. But I want to say he aged him. Because he, uh, he, he could pick any form. Yeah. I mean, he picks David Hasselhoff and all that other stuff. That, um, that, that, oh, yeah. Well, that was more the, yeah, the, the memory. Trying to figure it, yeah. In Quill's head. But I think, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's what he wanted. I, in my opinion, that's that's what I think he would do. It's like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm your father. I want you. I want to look like your dad. Because he could pick, I mean, he could pick anybody, you know? Um, I did like the, the, the way that the story of Ego was um, kind of the Futurama episode where um, uh, Leela marries the the guy they do they they do like the what's his name um al al, al berserk or oh al yeah al berserk, al berserk. yeah he marries the kid ow so like yeah. it is kind of that episode of, of futurama where he goes around and he uh he uh they, you know he gets so many uh like alien pre female pregnant because that's just what he wants to do or something you know he wants to have all his mm -hmm. he's a morpher he could shift into all of them yep if you can morph into anything how come you didn't morph for it counted <laughs> Um, what do you think he aged himself? I was thinking that too, like father figure and everything. Yeah. Um, 
I don't think it's him getting old because he's been around there for millions and millions of years. And then, um, uh, and the David yeah. Hasselhoff, um, you think? I think he's going to be a repeat offender, but not in a David Hasselhoff. I mean, I think it's going to be like maybe an Adam Sandler role or something. Like, yeah, you know, we like, watch I, Click like, or something like that. Yeah, Click or or I mean, I think honestly, I, I was like David Hasselhoff, and then you just say forget the image. He comes out in for for a, for a minute. If we had Dodgeball, he's in it for another cameo. Yeah, like David Hasselhoff basically does cameos of himself now. We could watch SpongeBob, and see him in that. Yeah, that's exactly. See, that's like he's got a few. Yeah. <laughs> what I was just saying. Really look what nice. I was just saying. Look what I was just saying about Twin Diesel, about the fact that he had to, um, he had to. He, I mean, he he did all the vo- uh, the vocals for um, original lines for Groot. Like he uh, he 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 said them all like original. It wasn't like a loop. But look, what I just found out about this. <laughs> Damn. Vin Diesel recorded Groot's voice for 16 foreign language releases of the film <laughs> up from six from the first film. <laughs> he had to... So how did, how did he, did he have to say it in like French and stuff or? I guess I so. Know. I mean, it wouldn't be, it's only three letters, so it should be fairly easy. You know, you just, you get really good at saying it, you know? Yeah, but 16 times. So he, he man, that's like, I don't know. That's, I, probably... I mean, I mean, he's probably getting paid quite a bit of money. Yeah, sorry. I'll do so let's, let's, I mean, it's probably not like, oh, okay, we're gonna give you a hundred grand, uh, take a break from your Fast and Fur- Furious franchise that's made over a billion dollars to come <laughs> and like, say three lines. No, I mean, if they're, I imagine they're they're paying him millions. They're gonna get as much work out of him as possible. Um, are you, are you, do you think that he read the the script and he was like, you know, this is a lot about family. I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, probably. Dom. Dom, Dom and his oh, family. T- the 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 teaser poster is a parody of the cover from Ramon's album "Rocket to Russia." Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the way you're talking about the one where they're all um, in a line. I think uh, is it, is it I a had, teaser one, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I you think I, I I had um no, it's uh let's see here. I think it's probably on IMDb. I think I just found something that we're gonna have to meet too. Not me too, but it's gonna have to be changed because I'm now I'm playing. I just thought that was something because I found a little, found a little, uh, found a little note here. Boom! Little little comics trivia in Mantis the comics. Mantis German. in the comics. Mantis is half German, half Vietnamese. She is portrayed in the film by Palm. Uh, Clementif, who has a South Korean mother and a French Russian father. Nope. Sorry. I need to. I need to be exactly like the character. <laughs> That's cool that they that they actually. I didn't even think about Mantis as a in the comics. You find out she has half German and half Vietnamese. That's cool. Interesting. Mantis, char- Mantis character. Um. Let's see here. I don't, I can't, I can't find the poster, but I did get a post. Whenever I went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy, I do remember I got a free poster with it. Yeah, I got, I got a few of those. I forget where I put them, but you're right. I got a few yeah. of them when you get watched, like, I remember Iron Man. And, I think uh, it, I think it got lost in the numerous moves that I've done recently, but yeah. Did Chris Sullivan's taser face makeup took two and a half to three and a half hours to apply. God. Jesus. But after a while, I think it takes, like, um, it takes, uh, you know, used to, I guess. God damn, two and a, three hours just sit there, put makeup on that they're going to take off at the end of the day and do it again all over. Mm-mm-mm. No, thank you. That's a lot, man. That's. Yeah, dude. I mean, Freddy, uh, Robert England, Freddy Krueger, man. He was like, at the end, you could tell like in the, in the photos as they're getting clo- winding down closer and closer to the end of the, of the, uh, the movie. Uh, I think the, the fourth one, um, he's already like tired of it. And then uh, when they tell him to take off the mask for like the final time for the for the rap, he just rips it off. Like he's just like, ah, <laughs> I just <laughs> wants it. Like, oh man, I couldn't imagine that. Um, you know, I, I I think this is a true sequel. Yeah, I think this is honestly a true true sequel with growth, with a little bit of everything that you like. Um, it feels like a continuing. And then like you like you educated me on the fact that it's literally like right after part one. Like I, I kind of was trying to figure out again where it falls in the timeline, uh, but it's 
I want to see what. So is the third one going to be? It's going to be its own thing, right? You think it's going to? Is it going to be part of the MCU still, or is it going to be its own standalone? Or it's still going to be like? Is it still going to have other characters like a Doctor Strange or like a you know, um, like a Hulk or something coming in? No, I don't. I don't think it'll have any of the any Avengers or anything like that. I think it'll be a standalone movie that's going to progress a new big bad character. Uh, because that's that's one thing it did for uh, phase uh, phase two was it introduced Thanos even more so. This is where you had Thanos actually talk, and this is the first time Josh Brolin is portraying Thanos um, and all that. So, yeah, I just uh, I think it's going to be a setup for a new big bad character. Not not even a setup, but it's going to be kind of a backdrop for it. So, I think that's probably where you're going to go with Guardians in? Three. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see Guardians Three, uh, man, and it with is Adam Warlock up. too. So, I you know probably Adam Warlock will be trying to fight the Guardians of the Galaxy and then have to team up and, and then he takes it from there. Takes it from there, yeah. So they're gonna have to get like a sixteen-year-old or fifteen-year-old Adam Warlock, so they can keep going with him for the next 10, 20 years as thirty-five years. Well, later. yeah, I've uh, I saw that Brie Larson's gonna be like the new Robert Downey Jr. of the MCU, and then I read today earlier that Anthony Mackie said, "I've got another six to eight years of being a Captain America before I'm I'm done." I think he's just talking age and physically. Yeah. Uh, so wait, Captain, I heard about that. I didn't. I missed the article. So Captain Amer- Captain Marvel is gonna be the. The they, that's what they're that's what they're saying it's like you know how robert downey jr was the face of the mcu for the longest time they're they're trying to transition captain marvel into being that we'll see we'll see so i'm on the part in Gal- galaxy uh, volume two where gamora um finally catches up to i'm sorry where um nebula finally catches up to gamora and she's using that spaceship to get her and just just trying so hard to like mm-hmm. you know to something it makes me feel like you can't kill each other we just make each other better like that like it's just a really yeah. messed up way but um, my that's what they were doing their whole life yeah and then they helping each other survive and then um the part so gamora gets the that gun that was on the pilot the, the, the on the ship and she puts it on and she starts shooting nebula you know what that reminded me of and i don't i haven't looked it up yet i haven't found it but it reminded me of an homage to the old uh, capcom versus marvel games when if you would use um, you would use a character like Iron Man or War Machine, and when you when you power up to get your special, you know it would be like a it'd be a giant cannon that gets out and shoots. I think that's what they were doing in this scene, that she's shooting this giant cannon at, at Nebula, the Gamora is, and and it's like a like a, a special move. I think it is kind of crazy. She's holding up a freaking like a, 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 like a turret gun that was on a, a jet. Oh yeah. And now she, and now she's, she's like picked that up. She's a badass, <laughs> Gamora. Super I mean, there's, strong. Like, there's a cut under the things, um, you know, mouth. Let's go. Let me help you. Uh, let's get it. And she just does it on her own. So she also says, he's like, the gun's my thing. She's like, oh, I got a gun. And he's like, and, I, and you're the knife person. And she ends up using the knife to kill it. Like, to kill that <laughs> giant worm thing. And, uh, you know, the whole batteries things is, is crazy how the battery comes around to the end. You know, the battery actually kills ego, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, I like that sense where Ego already knows, like when he's about to die, and Ego knows, and and um, and Quinn is holding him back, Quill is holding him back, and uh, he's like, no, 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 he's like, he's like that. That's kind of weird, like you know, your time's up, and you can can't really do anything because you're being held down. That's, you know, it's it's kind of, oh, it's weird. And then and then the way he dies at the end, Ego is turns into like sand or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I ju- I just watched that uh, a minute ago as well. Well, a little bit more than a minute ago. I have a question for you, though. Whenever he touches him and is like, here, I found purpose and touches him, what do you think he's showing him? I know he says eternity, but... What are you you talking about? Whenever Ego shows Quill his purpose, whenever he's trying to show him how to... uh, Yeah, how he's going to take over the universe and everything like that. I don't. I took that as. I mean, it's like a setup. It, it kind of felt already that he's going to use him for something, but I didn't know what was going on. I know it's, it's going to turn somewhere. Uh, I mean, basically, you turn him into a battery, you know, like he said. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think, and that's why I'm also saying, like, I think only the powers will exist while ego is alive. I, I think it, it's more like he's a conduit, um, Star Lord, so mm-hmm. he can just use him. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but I don't. I guess he's, he's filling up a lot of bullshit. Too. I don't know. He's not really bullshitting him. He's because he's also telling him that it kind of makes me sad that they put a tumor in your mom's head. Like that's mm-hmm. just kind of like that. That's weird. Like he gives him the keys to all this shit, and then basically he's not training him to fight him. He's training him to to help him out. You know, to help him become stronger. And that's because because um, ego wants to take over the whole wants to cover the whole universe. He wants to take like he's like the the first Thanos to kind of go up against. That's that's not Thanos. You know, that's kind of yeah. like the same mindset where well ronin was trying to destroy the universe ego is trying to destroy it as well right kind of he thought that he he thought that it would oh i mean yeah it would essentially destroy the universe so yeah uh and then ronin was just trying to destroy a planet yeah and he, was, he wouldn't he, he wouldn't even trying to destroy the universe well, he was, That's well crazy. He's, he's also trying to go he's, he's trying to go up against danos because he said i'm coming for you after he gets the infinity stone yeah. So, so then yeah. he turns on him. So that's man. So I think Ronan is probably one of the best written villains in the MCU. Like yeah. that. That that's not a. I don't even know. He's like a main. He's just. He's just a. He's just a kind of run of the mill like badass character. Like can't can't fuck with me kind of character. You know. Yeah, because because uh, Ronan's character is is strong and powerful in your face, where Ego is this father figure that's gonna screw you over. You know, kind of thing. It's sneakily, sneakily does it. Um, you know, and that threw me off when I saw the, 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 the bones and everything. I was wondering what that all that was. I thought he was eating the people, but it was basically his children he was killing. Yep. So I don't know how he kills trying, them, but Well, I imagine he was trying to get their power to manifest and it yeah. just didn't work, so he was just like Nope. So that's why he's moving. so he planted all these he literally planted all these seeds so he can eventually yeah. But here's the thing: What if, what if they needed to grow older for their power to manifest? He was just killing these kids for for no reason. Yeah, that's true. Because Peter's if, the only one that makes it. I mean, you would assume that Peter's the only one that makes it to that old. Yeah, at least the thirties, right? Yeah. So he at least has time. Man, I, this the dialogue's good. The shots are good. The angles are good. It's, I think it's just time to score it. But before we do that, I'm gonna put the. Um, put the the wikipedia info up on the cost because uh you know so we're gonna about yeah. to pop out right here three two one side by side oh i made it too thin there <laughs> so uh look at that man why does okay this is guardians of the galaxy so let's go i got it let's see it's got director james gunn produced by kevin faggy uh you know uh nicole uh Pyramid and James Gunn wrote it and based off the Guardians of the Galaxy of Dan Abnett and Andy Lanny, Chris Pratt, Zoe Zaldana, Dave Bautista, Vin uh, Diesel, Bradley Cooper, Lee Pace, Michael Roker, Karen Gillian, Dijmon, Han Su, or John C. Rowley, Glenn Close. These are Benicio Del Toro. These are all great actors, by the way. And I, you know, the, 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 the bill for this is amazing. Um, look at that budget. Why is the budget? Oh, no, gross and net. So it was... Uh, Two hundred and thirty-two point three million gross for the budget, and then one ninety-five point nine million net. So you add that, or is that I have no, separate? I have no clue. I'm not too I sure. I think that's separate. I think it's separate. But it freaking made seven hundred and seventy-two point eight million dollars. Holy crap, man! Almost a billion, right there. That is. That's a lot of hooch. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Guardians of the Guardians two. Uh, two hundred million budget, <laughs> box office eight hundred and sixty three point eight. Sorry, I didn't move it over. There you go. Uh, wow, that's insane. And basically the same names. You got Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, Vin Diesel. You know, add, you add in uh, Pom, and Sylvester so Stallone, and Kurt Russell, basically, and Sean Gunn to this one, Chris Sullivan, but uh, Elizabeth Debicki. Uh, yeah, this movie really um. That's what we really did. I don't know if this one made the which is which film you made the most money. Oh, uh, Endgame, Infinity War. Endgame, the last one made the most. Wow. Oh, dude, it had to. Have, it had to. Have. I could be wrong, but I don't know, man. I I think you're right about that because it's the ending one. I I dude, I love Infinity uh, Infinity Wars, man. Yeah. That that one that one is, um, you know. Infinity Wars, I could watch that one a lot, man. That one's popcorn music movie, and I could sit down and watch it. Uh, Earth is closed today. <laughs> like you know, <laughs> you get the best out of Tony Stark in this one. I I, I think. I mean, he's not. I think I think in, in Spider Man, he's he really got to get the best 
clips of Tony Spark, but I think this one is where he's acting. Mm -hmm. I think this is the best one of, of him. Um, but do, okay, I'm sorry. Going back to Gardens 2, I'm at the part where you're talking about where um, uh, Ego um, gets Quill to look up and then he, he touches him in the, in the forehead. Mm -hmm. And the part we look, um, man, maybe it's like a, a euphoric trip or something. I, th I think he's showing him the meaning of life. That's that's what I think it is. He said, I finally found purpose, and purpose is finding the meaning of life. At least that's what you would think as a as a human. But that's that's what I was thinking it was. Yeah, it's always like, why are we here? We're, we're yeah. trying, uh, questioning my existence. Oh, the freaking jumping. We usually do 50 at a time. We're 700. So that's how you get all the trippy <laughs> faces they do, like the like a face filter. Oh, yeah, and Stan yeah. Lee, another repeat offender. Anna. It's like, is Stan Lee? Yeah, oh, he, he is. is. From he is. Uh, yeah, Rats. from all rats, yeah. All right. And then the watcher. Right. Yeah, he's the watcher in this one. He's hanging out um, with the watcher. All right. So let's uh let's do the the ratings. Um I have rotten tomatoes pulled up here if you want to get oh, IMDb. Yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do that. It's already that time, everybody. Nice little conversation we had here about the yeah, the Guardians. All right, Guardians of the Galaxy 2014 on IMDb out of 10 stars. This got some, this has an 8 out of 10 out mm -hmm. of 1.1,067,665 1, votes. That's Damn. Is that our best one? Is, Damn. I think so, yeah. An 8. Wow. And then uh let's see Guardians 2. Let's see. I'm not even prepared. I'm sorry. Here we go. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, 2017, out of 590,416 uh, votes. This has a 7.6 out of 10. It's still up there, man. That's yeah, the, it, it has a what now? 7.6 out, out of 10. Wow. It's still up there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy is going to have a 92% fresh uh, tomato meter on. Uh, that is going to be for the critic score. Um, that's 330 reviews. The audience score is going to be a 92% as well. Uh, they're both going to be the same score with 250,000 ratings on that. The critics' consensus is going to be Guardians of the Galaxy is just as irreverent as fans of the frequently zany Marvel comics would expect, as well as funny, thrilling, full of heart, and packed with physical or visual splendor. So, yeah, not surprising why, there at why, all. Why he, they have Zany and Marvel Comics together, but hey, you know. No. 92. No, well, how, when you feel a score a night, when this is a, a matched score, how do you feel about that? That when the when the consensus or the fresh and the audience meet, the tomato meter and the audience meet. I, I feel like oh, I feel like that means that it's a it's a good movie. <laughs> I know I, I that's I just feel like if critics and audiences can agree on something that unanimously i think that yeah it's it's probably going to be a good movie it has like it's like so the the soundtrack on this movie kind of moves moves everything along it's it, it hits all the right notes um you know it's it's a great movie man it's a it's a great stride in the mcu uh, it was one of the movies I don't think a lot of people were expecting to be a hit, uh, but yes. they did it well, and it ended up being uh, one of the more memorable movies of the MCU. Um, yes, even sir. even so much like um, so, I I own Phase One and Phase Two. I have the I have some exclusive um, like Phase One comes in a briefcase briefcase that I have. Yeah. And then phase two came with the orb from Morog. So that's that's kind of like how big of an influence Guardians had. It's like phase two. I mean, granted, it's an infinity stone. Yeah. And so is the, the I had a Tesseract in the briefcase, mind you, as well. Cool. So um so that's probably why they chose it. But this is also the place where you see, I mean, outside of Avengers and uh you know, Thor, the dark world. I mean, you see infinity stone just kind of like you, first off you learn about infinity stones. They give you like a down and dirty kind of like lesson on infinity, infinity stones and guardians yeah. of the galaxy. Uh, whenever you go to the collectors. So it's almost like a, like a stepping stone moving that aspect too. It's like, 
you're learning a lot about the MCU. Um, you're learning a lot about these characters. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts in this movie. And I think that's why it works so well is it meshes with everything that you know so far, but is fresh. You know, it's a new, it's a new type of movie. Uh, the other ones didn't have the kind of uh, music that this one did um, as well. And I think that does kind of, the music is what makes this movie, in my opinion. Um, but that being man, you said, know, there's a lot of movies that haven't had the soundtrack of the movie and you're right, man, these might've been older yeah. songs, but they fit perfect on the, the mm-hmm. sense of, you know, like the movie, the crow, I still think has like a great soundtrack and the way they lay it in, they sit into the movie. It, it's awesome. Um, yeah, dude, volume, mm-hmm. volume two's turn. What did the volume two get? Yeah. So, um, you got anything on IMDb? Oh, did I, not, did I not give? Oh that? no, I think you did. You said it's seven point six. Yeah, Sorry. Seven point six. Um, so Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Volume Two, is going to have an eighty-five percent tomato meter score and an eighty-seven percent audience score. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two action uh, action packed plot, dazzling visuals, and irreverent humor add up in the sequel that's almost as fun, if not quite as thrilling as the, uh, if not as if not quite as thrillingly fresh as its predecessor. See, this that's is the almost British a, consensus. Yeah. yeah, this is almost, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't think it gets as high as scores. It's just because, uh, bu- 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 yeah, but, uh, it just, it didn't move the whole MCU along, I guess, as yeah. much like well, it, I, it was, I, it was, it was almost like the standalone of the guardians. Yeah, you're right. I think the first Guardians was just kind of like getting them together, but also you're, they had a, they had to be part of the Infinity Stone. I mean, the, the 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 MCU, and I think they brought this one to keep them relevant. You know, here's a sequel, yeah. and this is actually the number one and not the number two, but this is it. I mean, 85, 87, man, this is weird. I, this is kind of they're, they're still close to each other. I, I think they would be a little bit off, but at 87 for the audience score is almost right. It's B plus. Mm-hmm. Um, man, I I'm ready to score if you're ready to score. I am too, and I'm going to make this uh, kind of easy on us. Uh, I'm going to tell you my scores just right off the bat. Both these movies get a 12. Both of them. Not not a 13? Not, none of them a 13? I would love to give them a 13. Um, I'm saying for you, because I, I, I think you really do. You're into the Guardians. I am. Um, <laughs> I'm just... Uh, Mm. How about this? I would, man. I don't want to say. I feel. This. I feel like a twelve is a is a solid score. I'm for. I I'll, I'll listen to your scores, but I'm I'm keeping it as a twelve right now, just because. Oh, well, I mean, honestly, this movie is for everybody. <clears throat> Dude, on, okay, Some people but, just don't get into the superhero movies. I, I have I noticed you. that, you know. But these, these are our, these are your movies, though. How, how do they how do you, how do they reflect on you? And I mean, you just you just told me how the case and you have the Infinity Stone. Like it's like wow. I'm like man, I need to get that. You know, it's like you, uh-huh. you're you're invested a little bit more than just average viewer. You know, it's pretty yeah. Cool to... Um, no, that's that's very true. I'm gonna say okay, do you at lean, the do... at the very least, I would say the first one. I, I I like I like the second one for the story. I like the first one for how it sets everything up. So, you no, know, what? I'm, not, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to say 13 for you. No, I'm cool with 12. what I'm trying to say. Well, I guess what I'm trying to sneakily say is, are you leaning more towards one or towards two? Which or are they equals to you? They're equals. But if it's, I had to lean towards one, it would be both. Yes, that's a, well, this is your honest answer. You didn't both. They're, are they. I mean, honestly, they both flow very well. It's it's almost like. Uh, it's watching it's watching a TV show. It's like, okay, this is how I get here, kind of thing. Yeah. And we'll see how the third one is. Um, but I uh no, these these first two Dude, fantastic. I have They're high both... expectations for the, the third one. I feel like I hope I don't I don't care if I get let down, but I have really high expectations for the third one. Yeah. Like like might be the official trailer, but the reason I ask is I just uh, these are man I have my scores when I walked in. I knew one was going to be a 12 for me. And I was like, mm-hmm. how do I make it a 13? 
I do remember when I walked out of watching the first one, I was like, dude, this is a great movie. Not even like MCU movie, just a movie alone. So I would like to say it's a 13, like I really do, but it'd be, it'd be like more like a, more like a 12. It is a 12 for me. Yeah. Now the reason my score is a 12 on the second one is because when I walked it, walked into the thing, I was telling myself like, all right, with this episode, it's a nine, but the more I got to, the more I, I paid attention again and I, I, everything started connecting in my head, the score started jumping up and started jumping up and started jumping up and it got to a 12. I was, I, I, I honestly, I prefer the, the first one for a long time, but now that actually going through the second one and you pick up a lot more uh, references, you understand there's a lot, there's a, it's kind of a standalone, but it's kind of, a, it, it still works in the, in the grand scheme of the MCU. Not, not to say to push the MCU forward or back, but they're still relevant in the story. You know, that's my freaking father. <laughs> I'm not that part. With you, got <laughs> you guys yeah. have issues. Um, um, I, I think I do know why these are 12s for me. I know these are really good movies, but I don't know why, you know? I can't, it's like, like I was saying, it's that, that formula that Disney slash Marvel has come up with. And I think uh, until I figure out what it is, what that formula is and how, what, what parts of my brain are being manipulated to make me enjoy these movies so much more than, you know, just a superhero movie. Cause I remember watching Spider-Man and Spider-Man two and not having the emotions and feelings that I have at an MCU movie, you know, that's that's Uh, really cool. Yeah, because so. I feel like it's like uh, with me with the uh, with X Men how it came out and I saw that at the theaters, and then X Two came out and I was like, whoa, you know, same thing with Spider Man, but Spider Man Two was just, it was way out there, man. It was so much better. Yeah, I mean Sam Raimi did do the third one, but it is a different, uh, it's its own little, you know, <laughs> what beast, uh, you know. Yeah. But um, uh, man, yeah, I think for. For for me, these are twelves, man. They're, these are awesome movies. I, man, they got the perfect cast too. I think they got mm-hmm. a lot of the, the the things right on this movie. Like everybody's cast perfectly. Um, the Nebula character grew on me more. Like it's like she's a villain, the complete villain in the first one. In the second one, she's like an anti-villain, you know. And by yeah. by the time you get to Endgame, she's not even annoying, really. She's not even like she's completely changed. And then you have it, the the end game with her and, and Tony Stark just having mm-hmm. hanging out. She has that that personality to be like, I can do this. You know, she, she's still robot. Like, see, that's another one. Is she more robot by this point? Than, no, than no, human. she's she's definitely becoming more human because, oh, you know, yeah. he off he offers he offers her food and she's like, no, you eat it. Like, she's she's learning what it's like to be compassionate, com- or to be to have compassion showed to her. Yeah, you know. Because every every other person in her life has just shown her tough love, you know. He's just just he's just trying to be a human with her, and yeah. she she's it takes her a while to understand. But I think she she finally gets it, um, you know, by the end of end of end game. So we'll see if she's a a big part of the third one as well too i mean she she may be a catalyst in there too she may be kind of leading the bunch then again you know we may may have a whole deal with the stallone and the ravagers and that may be where they go and do um i mean because the ravager faction that was yondu's i mean they're all gone yeah or they <laughs> and, killed each other as idiots yeah <laughs> And well, the other ones fought. Well, they they let the people out of the hangar, and then Yondu just destroyed everybody else. Oh, that's true. He kills them all. <clears throat> yep. This is the first one they fight. The second one, he he kills them all. You yep. know that 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 Yondu and that whistling um, arrow is amazing. It's like it's it's mm-hmm. it's crazy how he just kind of walks and <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. awesome. And but he also says, "I don't use my my head. I use my heart." Is where he kind of told Quill, you know, like use your heart. Like it's a little message in there. Message. Um, message uh, we're, we're, we're at the end uh we got about 12 minutes left till we get to the half mark um you did say something right now you said stallone and i didn't even realize that this is a stallone and kurt russell movie as in a 19 i believe 1988 movie they call tango and cash where they uh, it's probably mm. the best duo of all time so i was actually thinking about this the other day um whenever you know we had stallone in here uh, I say we do Rocky and Rocky Five. Rocky and Rocky Five. You want to go from the beginning and go to the end? Well, Rocky Five was the first one you saw, right? 
Yeah, I went backwards. No, you I saw. Back- no, I went. I went. No, no, no. I went first. I went. I got. I saw them all. I saw them all. Like I saw one, and which and it was pretty cool. I just. I just. I was watching Rocky the other day. Um, I, I got to an hour in, uh, but it was like I watched the first. Cause I watched my uncle. My uncle pulled me to the side and said, "You're gonna watch." You, what's, I go, "What's Rocky? You haven't seen Rocky?" And I watched one, two, mm-hmm. <laughs> three, all on VHS. I got to four, and I was like, "Man, I wish there was one more." He goes, "Oh, there is another one. Number five. Let's watch it." I was like, "What? Like I didn't even realize there were all these Rocky. I would totally do Rocky, but." But uh, but uh, I thought Rocky Five was the first one. I miss I miss remember that story. My nah, bad. I like uh, man. If we're gonna do Rocky, man, dude, I would like. So to I'm gonna be Rocky. honest. I, I I don't I don't have a lot of Rocky. Uh, I don't know if I've seen any of them all the way through, just bits and pieces. Dude, I would totally love to do Rocky um, as an independent. Watch it as an independent movie, mm-hmm. um, and as a big you know blockbuster that it became. I would I would love Rocky. Um, what would, what would we compare that to? Is there any modern day like kind of like? Um, oh, why don't we do Creed? You want to do Rocky and Creed? I mean, that's that's essentially the next Rocky, right? Yeah, that's like the the. I was I was I, my first thing that popped in my head was Million Dollar Baby, just because it was a yeah. boxing movie and Clint Eastwood, but that didn't have to deal with it. Creed is actually well, in the same freaking. Yeah, movie. and but, but it's a it's a continuation kind of. What yeah, were you but, saying? Well, the only thing is with the I don't mind Creed. I just think um, it's like Rocky Five. We're we're skipping like two, three, four. And you're you're going, but that's like because there's a Creed two now, so it could yeah. be like its own. Uh, have you seen Creed? I have not seen Creed. That would oh. be, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a bad thing for. I mean, I, I I like I don't mind watching. You know, we learn here. Uh, well, it's not even that. I'm just saying, like, could could it be like it's? I mean, I know we're we're skipping a few things, but I mean, you would assume that it's going to be like it's its own kind of thing it's just gonna have rocky in it you know yeah <laughs> you said the perfect line you know uh yeah let's do it man because because you got rocky because I, I just like the original one if and something to compare it to would be rocky which would mm-hmm. be like him passing the torch yeah so i think so we're, i think we could do uh rocky and creed that seems like uh because it's because you sure. get all the you'll get all the references i believe oh, wait Three, the, you get Apollo dies in the fourth one, so you get all the references. Yeah, you, yeah, we should be fine. We should be fine. I think we get enough. I mean, I, I just, I just got to the first part for the first one, so you get to see Creed, Apollo Creed, the father, and you get to see the Italian style in Stallone, and then now we're seeing the Italian style in Stallone training the Creed. Uh, I don't want to say junior, but the and second. I'm, I'm assuming because that you will get that story and everything in there as well. Cause I'm sure there's some people that would, that weren't, you know, huge avid Rocky. They, you know what I'm saying? Like they're trying to get the new, new generation in. So they'll probably have, have something in there to tie in. And well, it's like, a, it's like a time piece too. Cause 76 all the way to when was Creed 2015, something like that. Yeah. 2015. Something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's got a good, good 40, almost. Yeah. 30. Yeah. That's a good time. We can see what the, also, it's a, it's a, another it's like a sports movie because boxing is a sport. So we're gonna go from uh, you know a sports movie about boxing from like the seventies till the you know new the twenty twenty fifteens. You know, it's like that's like a wait. This isn't our first sports movie, is it? No, I don't think so. Do we uh, do other sports? Start, starting to start. No, I think I don't think we've done other sports movies. And these two aren't don't these aren't comedies. This is kind of cool. This is a. Uh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna we're locking them in real quick. We're gonna do Rocky. Yeah, seventy six, and then we're gonna do Creed. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm ripping my brain around this, and I'm like, this it's, has uh, got to be two thousand, two thousand. Yeah, two thousand fifteen. Whoa, yeah, we almost got a forty year difference here, man. Um, wow, there's gonna be a Creed three, twenty twenty two. They're still going. All right, let's. Uh, all right, here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, take off the uh, the background, so we're about to see our mugs. Oh, and by the way, we totally forgot. We are using a uh, StreamYard. Hey, we just did it at the end this duck. time. Look at that! Uh, <laughs> look at that duck. So yeah, so if anybody wants to, um, you know, learn about StreamYard, just uh, let, let us know. But uh, <laughs> it's what we're using right now today to do our podcast or our streaming. So we are going to do for uh, oh for this side by side we did um, Guardians of the Galaxy one and Guardians of the Galaxy two. And we're moving on to a uh, Rocky 1976 PG two hours drama sport. Um, December 3rd, 1976 was the release date. 
a small town boxer gets a, a supremely rare chance to fight a heavyweight champion in a bout in which he strives to go the distance for his self-respect. Director John G. Avlason, and then writer Silver Stallone, star Silver Stallone, uh, Tila Shar and Burt Young. And then we're doing Creed, 2015, PG-13, 2 hours, 13 minutes, drama, sport, November 25th, 2015. The former uh, world heavyweight champion Rocky Balboa serves as trainer and mentor to Andonius Johnson, the son of his late friend and former rival Apollo Creed. Director Ryan Coogler, uh, writers Ryan Coogler, and uh, stars Michael B. Jordan, so it's Stallone, and Tessa Thompson. Whoa, 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 we're moving on. We're getting into sports. They're both uh, drama sports. How do oh, you, yeah. uh, uh, we're gonna see a lot of, uh, I'm ready for mm. it. So, uh, <laughs> I got, uh, we did. We just finished up the Guardians. I'm watching the. Uh, you're right. That hero shot that they have right here, where they mm -hmm. um, they kind of go in that. They have their own uh, like Avengers one. So, is there any other hero shots in any other of the groups, or is this? Yeah, they they do. They do in the Infinity War. Yeah, they have. A, they're all kind of. They're all. So the Avengers kind of just gets the first one, and then after that, they kind of do it. Mm -hmm. But um, all right, we're we're got about got running. We're we're done. What do you want to? Anything you want to? Do you want to bring up? Anything you want to? You want to say before we head out? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Yeah. This will be posted now that we do the, the stream yard. Uh, it should be posted yeah. soon. So we'll be able to uh, get this uh, bad boy out there and uh, we'll keep going. This is uh, episode 39. Moving on to episode 40. Hey, four zero. So at least we've done, what is that, like at least 40 weeks if they're doing it once a week. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we did two, two in a row, then we take some weeks off. So it's at least 40 weeks. Congratulations, uh, Ben. Uh, we've, Thank you. Uh, no, th and congratulations to you too. Hey, we'll um, let's go. We'll we'll keep going. Let's do this. Um, I, I'd like to see um, I'd like to see when we can have Ben Hameen on the show, and uh, when, he, <laughs> when he can be here. But uh, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, Maybe one day. One day we'll see when we get there. We'll find we'll find Ben Hameen. Yeah, um, I, I I gotta say the Drags character grows on me a little bit more. A oh yeah, bit more every time I watch this, a little bit more um yeah well i'll leave that alone that, that is in the books um i got nothing else to say same so, here <laughs> see y'all later oh you know what before uh, i should have done this see i'm watching the movie and then i realized i don't ever do the mother it's like because i'm live now so we're gonna be i have figured out how to uh how to get the uh the song just going hey gotta work on that intro huh and that and outro. outro yep Joe. so we'll see we'll go live i don't know if i'll be doing <laughs> like a boom we'll box like, <laughs> like a little boom box. And, and the audio is moving around all over the place all right well everyone we'll see y'all later peace have a good night bye